No place you'd rather be as the roar reverberates around the mighty MCG. 90 plus thousand in the house. As Geelong go into a huddle, Richmond just wander around down towards their attack in 50. The two man is not far away. What are you seeing on the two oh, replay? Chris Scott, and I love, it's the old fashioned pump up speech. Yeah, game. I like it's it. It's gone out of fashion, Brownie. Yep. Chris Scott's brought it back last week and he's gone to the well again. And you mentioned about the singing of the National Anthem, Duke. Uh, from Geelong, only Dangerfield and Guthrie sung the National Anthem. And for the Tigers, it was Rewalt, Baker and Alice. There was a five people out of the 44 out there sung the National Anthem. And Geelong not hugging. I like that, Howard. Richmond players all hugging. I like the strong, silent look that the Geelong players gave there. And uh, I think that could be important to you. You a non-hugger, are you, Judd? Non-hugger, yep. Nate's gone into Anthem Watch in the lead-up to the <laughs> five out of 44. I lot, like it. Uh, the man with all the numbers, Triple M Red Z Lending Stats, number one boy, preliminary final, probably about number 50, I would have thought, for you two, man. <laughs> Welcome along. How are you, great man? Good evening, Howie. As you would expect, a bumper crowd. Look outside of the 27 GF Richmond's last six finals at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. They've averaged 93,000, so I wow. reckon we must have about 95 tonight. But Dustin Martin, as we have a look at the toss, uh, Howie, between Selwood and Cochin. I'll just start off with Dustin Martin anyway. Thanks, Mariana. In a minute. That's tails. Trent Cochin wins the toss. He'll kick to the punt road end. Continue, Chewy. Yeah, and Dusty Martin, past seven rounds, averaging more ranking points than any other Richmond player. Averaging 29 disposals, five clearances, and he's kicked 13 majors. And Gary Ablett has been held goalless from four out of his past five games. We'll look out for him for Red Z. Nice work, Chewy. Bob Jane Teamarts has a month of big deals on big brands such as Bridgestone, Hancock, and BF Goodrich. You got Tommy Brown down there in the dock. Give me some atmosphere, Thomas. Uh, it's the dock here, oh, Howie. I give the atmosphere. I can't hear a damn thing, but it is an absolutely balmy night tonight, so we've got to make sure the conditioning uh, coaches have kept the players up with their fluids. We don't want any cramping. We don't need any pickle juice. But, uh, look, uh, no injury concerns from either side. And as we know earlier, no change to either side tonight. All right. We'll keep an eye on what's happening in the catch forward line. Nate, can you get an idea of what's going to happen at the start of the opening bounce here as the players wander around slowly into positions? So Lockie Henderson's gone forward with the Sava Radagalea. Ablett looks like he's going to start deep. Tim Kelly is going to start in the forward end as well. Dangerfield, Selwood, and also Guthrie. Probably your best three starting on ballers for the Cats in the middle. What's Lockie Henderson's break-even game tonight, Judge? Uh, if he can uh, get two goals, I think that'd be a huge effort. Bring the ball to ground. I think them not marking the ball in Geelong's forward line would be a big focus for him down there tonight. Could not get better conditions at the MCG. Stunning evening. Balmy, unseasonably hot. Hottest overnight conditions in 18 years last night in Melbourne. And we are set. It's the prelim final. It's the Tigers and the Cats. Not a spare seat in the house. Triple M rocking footy. Thanks to our marquee sponsors, Maccas. And the first hit out. Soldo got it. They dive in everywhere. Prestia. A danger went straight at him. Wrapped him up. Gang tackled Guthrie over the top. And a fierce first contest. No surprise there, Nate. Had a great lead in, Prestia. Six of the last seven games, he's had 30 or more disposals. He's on fire. Cam Guthrie back into this side. Important cog. Little fumble from Bashar Hawley. All-Australian at age 31. Asprey also had a little fumble, but got some time. And out to the man, Chris Judd said, is the key to the Tigers. Kane Lambert's got it at halfback. And he marks in front of Blitzarves. Just a little slider. What it was was a nice first touch for Alice. Uh, you said the two other players fumbled then, Duke, but Alice, who can be a bit fumbly, nicely took it at half back, and now he's got the footy again. Drives a 60 metre ball down the line to a contest. Spills free of the pack. Danger field towards Selwood. Rides a bump. And then he's got a free kick immediately, but too high. He goes towards the wing. Nicely cut off by Ellis as Brown, he said, started very nicely. And it's across the line on the outer wing. Well, he's a player who's been put up in trade talk already. He's played in a premiership. He's now in another preliminary final. I'd imagine he'd want to stay a Tiger player along this path. They're going to be a great side for the next two or three years. And he started like that. Just glancing to the punt right end. Jack Rubolt is playing the deepest forward. Lynch up at centre four. The ball's in centre wing. Martin got through and then got straight past Jed Buse with ease. Where's Jack Rewald? The short ball fisted away from that man by Keller Jasny. Dusty went back, tried to win his own ball back. Shane Edwards, that's a good, strong tackle. Blitz arms over the top with all his strength. He's the most dangerous player on the ground, uh, Dustin Martin, apart from Dangerfield. You can't let him 
goal side of the pack at a stoppage like that on centre wing. Nath Brown, an All-Australian. Chris Judd back there, Trillin Sewer, super special comments. Cotchen released a little handball out to Castagna, and he has a flying shot and just sneaks it through for a minor score. There's your first score of the evening, two minutes in. Triple M Simply Energy scoreboard. And I reckon Cam Guthrie is trying to put a little bit of time into Dusty around the stoppages. So we'll just have a closer look at that as the game goes on and see if it is a tight tag. Stewart plays on from full back. It's a booming kick, makes it all the way towards the wing. And it's fisted across the line from Caddy against his former teammate Dangerfield. You've got Nathan Brown and Chris Judd with your Triple M Seabus Super special comments. Seabus Super offering members insurance cover that protects building and construction workers. So this is interesting, Howard. Richmond actually have the loose number at this stoppage, so Geelong looking to get support behind the ball. Bruce Stanley working hard. Cam Guthrie sliced his way through beautifully with a number down. That's a big win for the Cats. As Juddy pointed out, got it to Vlostone. He smashes it back. It's all been played on the wing members' side. AFL logo. Pressed here. Tumbles one forward. Beautiful take. Rewalt. Pirouette around and then just bit off a little bit more than he could chew. And Joel Selwood to Radigalia! Oh, yes. oh, big Asala! Contested mark right in front of the dock down there on the wing. Big grab to get himself going. The number 17 immediately dishes by hand to Selwood who sweeps it to Dangerfield. Downfield. Umpire caught play under the advantage now. Piercing ball inside. 50. Henderson got hands to it. Grimes brought it to ground. Lockie did his job there. Made sure Grimes couldn't take the mark. Now big tackle applied inside. 50 by Tim Kelly. Against Floster and the umpire says, no, nah, I'll toss it up. What about that grab from Bigger Sabre on the wing? Triple M Box Tools replay. They love that. If you're kicking down the line, it is still one of the biggest things in our game. Soldo slapped it down, picked up by Danger. Play on Zakur, you can hear Tim Kelly. Got a slick little handball to a Sava. Dalhouse sold into a fair bit of trouble, immediately wrapped up. They're Preston allowing got hold um, Shane Edwards free at most of these stoppages, Judge. He's the number one player at the Tigers for goal assist, so he can be damaging. Cats deep in attack. Trying to access the footy is Dalhouse. Guthrie started the game nicely to Ablett. Swings round on the left boot. Gary Ablett oh. hasn't been shepherded through. Well, he's got done his That's job. Gazza likes it. It's a goal. It's in the book. I think they'll review it. Let's have a listen. I believe it's a goal. Can we just check if the ball is touched on the goal line? Of course it's a goal. Score and they've gone to the arc on the Triple M Coach Eye score review. Juddy saying goal, goal, goal. Judge has got it. They'll get there eventually, Howard. And it looks like Gary Ablett's kicked the opening goal in the preliminary final with a bit of assistance on the goal line from Lockie Henderson. Grimes did everything he could to get a fist on it. They're rocking and rolling big time on this one that it might have just grazed his arm inadvertently. Juddy called this two and a half minutes ago. What's going on at the arc? I don't know. It's a slow system. As long as it's right, that's all we care about. Still going through the arc. Replay number 10. You could build an arc. <laughs> Up high's call, goal. Catcher on the board, and Gazza's the one that runs it home. Geelong won straight. And the Tigers won behind. That's on the Triple M Simply Energy scoreboard. Simply Energy powering up the AFL. Well, you're right, Duke. Noah built an arc and filled it with animals in the time it took for the <laughs> AFL to get that decision right. But very important nonetheless. Really good start by the Cats. I think they've looked aggressive around the ball. What I mentioned earlier is that Richmond had the loose number at the stoppages so far around the ground, and that's very foreign to what we usually see. We usually see Richmond happy to go one less at the stoppage and create a loose behind the ground to protect them. Geelong doing that about to back to Richmond tonight. Interesting to see how that transpires. Triple M Bosch Tools replay Gary Ablett Senior in the house. And how good. Yeah, what a remarkable history the Ablett family have in our game. To think that Senior could produce Junior and there's some talk about who might have had a better career to Hall of Fame legends at some point. Well he might have missed it Gazza. He's still finding his seat. Still trying to get himself oh, no. seated. There is Narkel. We spoke about the Cats maybe getting out of the blocks and putting some pressure on Knuckles. Kick wasn't great. Brian Myers tackle. Southern stand wing side. Dusty Martin. Oh, good tackle. Parfit nailed Dusty. Parfit went back in, won the footy, flicked it out to Myers. Here comes Narkel again. Got through heavy traffic. Now Zach Tui has. Free kick to Kelly coming back. So the Cats having a really good patch here. They've got the first goal of the game. They lead it by five points. And Tim Kelly's got the footy. Still two kicks from home. 
on the outer side of the MCG. Pups a long one in the Radigan Lear direction. Dangerfield just went through his hands. Soldo kicked it out, but only as far as Kelly. He splits it in the middle of the ground. The Cats doing all the attacking. Harry Taylor, he launches a long bomb. Fist on it. He's nearly effective through for a behind, but in the end it's run across the line from Parfit. And it was the big Ruckman Soldo that nearly punched it through. So it'll be tossed on in with the Cats deep in attack, leading one straight to Richmond, one behind. Under the pump, the Tigers, but they did absorb a lot of pressure from Brisbane in that first quarter up at the Gabba. I love these repeat inside 50s teams, build a bit of pressure. Man in Gola, late inclusion a week back. Dangerfield's kick was marked or intercepted on the line by Asprey. Now they get it out, half-back kick from Bashar Hooli. And the numbers are with the catch. Jody, they're well structured early. Really well structured. They're not being quite as aggressive as they are with the kicks. They're choosing to kick it backwards when they've had a couple of options forward of the ball they've missed. A Kelly, two man, Red Zeds. He's already racked up four touches. He's got five now with a piercer down towards attack 50, and that's not what Lockie Henderson wants. While the ball is in Geelong's half of the ground, it suits them to have the number behind the footy. When the ball gets into the middle of the ground, it's always going to suit the Tigers, but right now the game's been played on Geelong's terms, so it suits them to have that number back. Henderson was outmarked by Grimes, who goes short to Ellis, who's had plenty of it. He drives a long ball down the outer wing, Zach, too. He's got his name on it, gets out the back. To Rioli, Fev's man with a high ball inside 50. Martin, Martin, Martin! Strong grab, good kick from Rioli. Dusty was out the back from Blitzars and will line up from only about 20 out to kick the Tigs first. Plays on, only just gets enough on it, Dusty Martin. Squeezes it through. Touch fortunate in the end, but it's a goal nevertheless, and the Punt Road Army are up. Richmond 1-1, one, one. the Cats 1 straight, Triple M Simply Energy scoreboard, Simply Energy powering up the AFL. Zach Tui made a massive error there, Judge. Uh, as a backman, when you go up with the ball and you're going up as a third man, there was two players, Tom Lynch was one of them, and uh, I think the other one at ground level was... Daniel Rioli stayed down. Well, at ground level, was I think it was Tom Stewart, so it was a one-on-one. -on -one. Zach Tui goes up and he needed to mark the footy. He needed yeah. to mark the footy or punch it 20 metres away. What he didn't do was do that and it just fell to the ground where Daniel Rioli st uh, sat there easy take away and then it was a nice kick to Dustin Martin but Zach too if he had his time over again he needs to take that mark. Kicked six goals last final Dusty Martin and he's planted himself deep in the goal square the deepest player Tom Stewart his match up and he's kicked the first of the night for the Tigers they lead it by one point nine and a half minutes gone in the first term here in prelim final night full house at the MCG this is Graham now. Where's Dusty Lynch? Oh. Pushed Harry Taylor underneath the footy. Nothing untoward, says the umpire. And the mark stands to this young gun, Tom Lynch. What did you think, Juddy? Free kick or not? Yeah, just checking the Triple M Bosch tools replay. Put a hand in his back, but I don't think it was sufficient enough force to pay a free kick. So I like that call by the umpire. Just get the three goals from his past two matches. Got them all against the Brisbane Lions. Dusty Martin coming off and... Let's have a look at him before through the binoculars. He just had a bit of a limp about him, Dusty. I'll get down to Dr. Ron White in a moment, so there's anything untoward there. But Tom Lynch, what a first season he's had for the Tigers. He's normally a beautiful kick. Great straight kick. over the hat of the goal umpire. Tom Lynch kicks a back-to-back -back goal for the Tigers. They're 2 on 13 The Cats are one straight six. It's a triple M simply energy scoreboard. Well, a score from clearance, wasn't it? It was a really good centre bounce clearance from Richmond. And when you get Tom Lynch in a one-on-one, -on -one, it doesn't matter who he's up against. There's going to be a chance to take that mark. I get the impression Tom Lynch would be looking around tonight. There's 93, 94 odd thousand people at the MCG, and he'd be thinking to himself, "Thank God I've made the move. Yeah. This is what you play football for. For I was never going to get this experience." up there on the Gold Coast, and he would be lapping every bit of the energy up from this crowd tonight. Bob Jane, team arts, uh, Tommy Brown, what's happening down there? Howie, the crowd's incredible tonight. The biggest I can see, recall this year, in fact, a lot of them are black and yellow. There's a huge Richmond contingent here. The doctor has his binoculars on Dusty. Your observations, Doc? Yeah, all clear. He uh, had a quick word to the uh, oh. trainer. No problems at all with Dusty. Brilliant. Ruck works straight down to Prestia, who unloads a long bomb towards Lynch again. Goal square. Another one for Tommy Lynch. Listen to the Tiger Army. Lynch has got two in a minute, and all of a sudden, Richmond kick 3-1 to Geelong, one straight, up by 13 points on the Triple M Simply Energy scoreboard. Uh, Tommy Brown, just while we've got you, 
Did you have a conversation with Gary Ablett Sr.? I did, How It was interesting. Gary Ablett Sr. came up to me and I shook his hand and he said, Nathan. He thinks I'm Nathan Templeton, <laughs> not Tom Brown. I don't know if that's a credit to Nathan or me. Who knows? But he was very hospitable and it was great to see him. It was like being in the company of an absolute superstar. I couldn't believe I saw him. Ah, nice uh, work, Tommy. T- <laughs> Toby Nankervis in the middle. Two occasions. This is silver service. The hit out. Narka was on the wrong side. He just put it down, pressed his throat. And then from there, the defender. You've got no hope. And Lynch was just over the back. The one before that put it out in the path of Graham. So two goals directly from Nankervis' hand. Yeah, Nankervis again won the hit out. Went charging after Narkel, Radicalia in the ruck. It's been an issue for the Cats, haven't it? They haven't nailed the ruck position at all this year. Sliding in Dalhouse. We're at half forward. Parfit now leads in the race. Has to concede momentarily with a handball. Back to Zach Tui. Here's the courageous skipper, Silwood. Squeeze a beautiful ball. O'Connor runs to 50. Short kick, Radicalia. So that was good movement. Great decision by O'Connor because you can be overawed when you get to footy when you're running so fast like he was and he was going flat out. The hardest thing to do is to steady and pick off a 15-metre pass like he was. The easiest thing would have been to get it at the top of the square, but it was a high degree of difficulty to get it to him, but it was the right option at the right time by the young man. I love the fact that he's played in the ruck rat and said to Nan Kervis, try and play on me as a backman. I'm going to make you work really hard. This is a big kick coming up. Asaba Radigalia. He's got it a little left. And you can hear it's a big Tiger crowd here. 95,000, the two man thinks, in the house. And a big, big part of that is the Richmond Army. 3 1 19, the Tigers. 1 1 7, the Cats. Triple M Simply Energy scoreboard. Tommy Lynch is almost playing a different sport to when he was at the Gold Coast Suns at Metricon Stadium, Judge. Just completely. Yeah, completely different experience for him. And he is a ripper bloke, so great to see him get his opportunity out there on the big stage. He's kicked a couple early. What are the Red Zeds telling you, Chewy? Yeah, Dion Prestia has been the number one ranked player for the Tigers this year overall. Four disposals and a couple of clearances. Nice work by Chuopolo. Selwood now to Kelly. He spirals a ball inside 50. Massive marking contest. Asprey got two hands to the punch away. Caddy attacks it, chest on. Nice work at ground level by the Tigers. Short's got an issue, trying to get rid of it. Here comes Myers, always dangerous around goal. He's done, I reckon. And he's done for holding the ball, Brian Myers. And the Tigers will reset in defence through Graham. So I reckon Short was a little bit lucky he didn't get pinged the one before that. So then Grimes and Asprey link up in the defensive chain. Out wide, Bolton, capable of taking a big specky. Is Dusty. As Dr. Ryan White told you, no issue at all the way he's moving. And they've got one out the back here. If Bolton can get possession. Oh, oh superb. Look at the athleticism That's and the agility. Play. That was remarkable, Juddy. Yeah, some of his attacking stuff is as good as anyone in the competition. Out wide, Caddy's the target. And he's going to take the mark. Zach Tui couldn't quite get there. Yeah, it's early stage in this game, but there's some ominous signs brownie around the Tigers. There is, and they're getting them over the top too. Geelong certainly putting on a defensive press, and it's a full ground defensive press. But right now, Richmond are over the pierce that. Now, you always want to pierce it through with 45 degree angle kicks, but Richmond are actually doing it right now with long kicks over the top, and players are marking the footy. 46 goals last year, Josh Caddy. Only the 17 in 2019. He had an injury interrupted start to the year. That one is to the near side. 3 2 20 one, one, seven. 13 point lead to the Tigers and the Triple M Simply Energy scoreboard. The Monopoly game at Maccas is back and bigger than ever. Visit maccasplay.com.au for full terms. The Cats play on through Tui. He hooks one out of defence. Down towards Menangola. Gets a little bit under the footy. Richmond look good at ground level. Martin shrugs off a tackle. The high fend off. No, it's called play on. Advantage Dustin Martin, but his kick slam straight in to the man on the mark. Parfit didn't see the tackle coming. He just sat around like he was a training and he got absolutely belted by Broad who gets a free kick. Dangerfield got up a little bit lame there. He seems to be okay going off through the interchange under siege at the moment. The Cats too, he jams it out of there. Broad flew up. Loston got one in the face. This is all at half back for the Cats. Half forward for the Tigers obviously as Atkins came in. Got it to O'Connor. Got a good win there. Squeeze the kick out the half forward. The little man Baker has got a lot of space. Plenty of time to win this footy. He's going back towards Grimes. It was an awkward kick. Guthrie was able to apply some pressure, but they've got everything they want at the moment, the Tigers. This is Jaden Short now. Three, four bounces. Streaming from half back to the wing. Lynch has already got a couple. Collar Jasney. Oh, Lynch. 
big mark again. He's just tearing one apart at the moment, Juddy. Yeah, absolutely. He just looks like the, the bloke most likely to kick a bag tonight. Just well, keep an eye on Dustin Martin. He's had five kicks. I don't think he's middle one yet. Even the goal he kicked was a miss kick, and he's had four kicks since then. Haven't really got over five metres high and have all been low. I reckon he might have some sort of issue out there. He's not moving hell of a lot at the moment since that last kick. Played every game this year, Tom Lynch. What a recruit. His first ever finals campaign. That one won't make the journey. All the way to the goal square. Rewalt off hands. And through for another minor score. 3-3, 21, 117. 14 point lead to the Tigers. Just having a look at Dusty Martin on the Triple M Bosch Tools replay screen. Good, better Bosch. Professional power tools, measuring tools and accessories. Seems to be moving okay. What are his numbers, Chewy? He's had uh, five disposals and kicked a major. Okay. And Doc will keep an eye on Dusty Martin. Now Blitzars with a hair up. Runs to the near side. Graham attacks the pack. Can't take the mark. Gazza at ground level. Nice little looper. Gets it to Tim Kelly. And there's Tigers all in front of him, so he takes a short option and hits Guthrie, who started this game very nicely. Bruce Stanley, the deepest forward for the Cats, and you automatically think of Tom Hawkins... Don't you, on that sort of quick release play, it wasn't that presenting forward. So now they're going to have to be patient. Gazza gets involved. They're going to go back to Zach Tui. He squares this one, heading towards the southern stand wing side. Stewart, they've got it all the way out that side now. College has, he's a very good player. Now they just bomb a long one. Stanley's got to stand up. Harry Taylor's pushed forward. Ball was taken initially by Dalhouse. Kelly got boot to ball and kicked the ribbing goal out of nothing. The game needed that. The Cats needed that. Tim Kelly kicks his first of the night. 2-1-13. Tigers 3-3-21. It's Triple M. Simply Energy scoreboard. Let's get down to Dr. Owen White. Yeah, Dustin Martin. Uh, pretty economical, as Brownie said. He's not moving uh, all that quickly. But, look, I think he's just conserving his energy at this point in time. He came off earlier with uh, what looked to be a knock to the lower leg. But that's not a problem. We'll keep a close eye on him. But at this point, I think he's OK. Well, it's a great goal by Tim Kelly. Seven disposals and one goal already in Geelong's. Big names getting involved. Joel Selwood with the five touches looked really dangerous in the centre square. Paddy Dangerfield, four touches, had his hands on the ball as well. So Geelong have come out with really high energy. They've come to play. They just need to not panic by Richmond's close start. If they can get to this break within striking distance, Chris Scott will be happy. You mentioned the Gold Coast and Tommy Lynch. Also Prestia out there from the Gold Coast. Gazza spent time up there and Josh Caddy as well. So... Gee, the Gold Coast would like some of those players still running around. Man, Curtis grabbed it out of the ruck. Dangerfield stripped it from him. Hits 50. Paddy unloads with a low sizzler. It'll land in the square. Working hard is Radigalia. Dowhouse Gazza. Can he kick his second? Just to the right of the big stick. Heats in this one. Richmond 3-3. Geelong 2-2. Triple M simply Angie scoreboard. 19-50 into the first term. Dangerfield streaming out of the centre. That... Must make Chris Scott happy. The centre clearance going to be enormous tonight. Now the Tigers fullback kicking was a short one to Asprey. Coming out the members' wing side of the MCG. Nan Kerbis and Stanley, the two big men, fisted away by Reece Stanley. Nice pick up from Atkins. Got it to danger. Heard the voice of Ablett. Flicked it out to the side. Gaz is going to get the centre and kick going. Radigalia down there. Ellis went back with a flight. Front and centre Kelly involved. The Tigers, though, win this one. Liam Baker's clearing kick only as far as Stewart well played Bolton initially and then held on a little too long free kick goes the way of Tom Stewart injured Tiger right in front of you Doc and uh, Tommy will get to that shortly inside 50 for the Cats towards Radigalia what about that Grimes just threw himself at the footy and he'll get the resulting free kick. Who's the Tiger down there, Doc? Jack well, Graham, is it? It was Jack Graham, uh, guys. Uh, what's the update there, Doc? We've just got a brief look at him. I think he's at the back of the bench with a what looks like a heavily damaged shoulder. Yeah, it's a dislocated shoulder, Tom. All right, he looks in a fair bit of trouble. Lambert hits the pack hard. Tui will look for the boundary line. Cochin says, no, nah, I'm going to keep it in. Rewalt, if it wasn't a throw, it was brilliant. Goes in board to Bolton. He'll drop it right to the goal square. Can he get it, Dustin Martin? Gee, I thought he had it. He was worried out of it in the end. And Myers will get an opportunity now to defence. At some stage, you need to talk about Dylan Grimes back there. It was brilliant, Brownie. It was courageous and a, an enormous contest. Dustin Martin had that mark, and the defence of Geelong stood up. 
Harry Taylor had to think about what he was going to do with the footy next. He slapped it into the path of his teammate, and then Grind Myers made a good decision. The Cats are right in this game. Boys, for Nath Brown, Chris Judd, the two man all the back row tonight. Triple MC by Super. Special comments team, the Cats edge it forward. They're in this game. Now's the time with six minutes to go that I'd send Danes Field forward. Ryan Myers runs around, gains an extra 10 metres, then pops it deep inside, forward 50. There is the man Brownie wants forward, Dangerfield. at three quarters of the mark. Jaden Short under pressures, only hacked it to Myers. Plays on quickly with that unusual kicking style, but it's effective, and Myers spears at home. Back-to-back -back goals. The Cats go to 3-2-20, and the Tigers are 3-3-21. On your triple M Simply Energy score. Huge moment on the goal line, Duke, because they won the ball in the back end, Richmond, through Dylan Grimes' great effort, as you said, Howard, and they went from end to end, and it would have been a house lifter if Dustin Martin had taken that mark on the goal line, went back and kicked his second one. The punt road end would have lit up, and then you lift from that. Players lift from that. All of a sudden, it didn't happen. Geelong turned the footy over, and I reckon they just cut Richmond off at the knees on that occasion. You could feel a bit of a shift in momentum just for that play. They go down, they kick the goal, and they are into their, up their eyeballs in this. Red Z lending. Low numbers for the Tigers. Cochin only two, Edwards two, Geelong plus 16 in uncontested ball. What's Dustin Martin's game time at the moment? Two years, he goes back onto the bench. Dustin Martin, how he come back to very short. Okay, for Red Z, Stanley works hard in the middle alongside Dangerfield, who takes about three Tigers with him. Kelly, he's awake to the bouncing ball, just spins it out to the outer flank. Now here's a chase. Dowhouse, the former dog, leads everyone to the ball. Back to Blitzarves. Cats just growing in confidence as the game goes on. Parfit, a sneaky little inside ball. Back to Lukey Dowhouse. 84% game time for Martin. It's at half forward. There's a lot of camera focus on Dusty on the mm. bench. Almost like the Seven Network feel like there's something wrong with Dusty. We'll find out. We'll keep an eye on him. Doc Rowan White, the best in the business down there with Tommy Brown all over it. Mark taken defensively by Soldo. Interesting Duke with Richmond playing the two rucks in Soldo and then Curvis. Losing Graham, they lose a runner already in playing the two rucks. Interesting to see if that affects them later on in the game. Bashar Hawley. Got it at half back. Pumps a long one down the line. Normally get a good call. Oh, Rich Stanley. Good contest. Didn't quite complete the mark. Picked up, though, by Dangerfield. Henderson playing forward. He had fisted away over the boundary line. It was by Asprey. Once again, the Cats get it inside their forward 50. And reload again. Dusty Martin back out there. No issues. Bob Jane, any sign of Jack Graham after that shoulder issue, Doc, or Brownie? No, Howie's still in the rooms. And there might have been an interchange infringement as well when he came off. He came across, across the Geelong uh, interchange area. So... I'm not even sure he could come back on anyway, but I think he's uh, he looks out for the night dog. Sorry, Tommy, I mucked that up. Dustin Martin hasn't gone back on. In fact, I was watching a Bosch Tools replay. As he came off the bench, he threw his arms out almost to the coaches to say, what the hell are you doing taking me off? Yeah, I think that's the way I read it too, Dust. Ball on the AFL logo on the wing. Taylor to Stanley. Kick and a half from home. It'll be a shallow entry inside. 50. Radigalia got up super high into the Melbourne night sky. Couldn't bring it down, gave the crowd a thrill though. And then the flank there, and the umpire will toss it up with the Cats just inside 50. They've kicked the last two goals and they trail by behind. 25 minutes into the first term on your Triple M Simply Energy scoreboard. Jumped on the back of the superstar Dangerfield and Danger getting involved again here. Speaking of superstars, oh. the little master Ablett, left foot kick out of the pack, Johnny. I'll get you to describe how good that was. Yes, that vision was brilliant. He was in traffic. It was about a 50-metre kick in the end on his opposite foot to a place that none of the other players in the competition would even be looking at. That's why he's a little master. It's quite a big kick, Buse, too. He's going to have to kick this from inside the square, so it's going to have to go over a bit of 60 metres. But I like him here better than I like him from 20 metres out directly in front. Kicked the clutch goal in the final quarter last week versus the West Coast Eagles. Winds up as Jed Buse. Gives it everything he's got to the goal square. Play on off hands. Menangola can't keep it in Baker and it will be thrown in right alongside the left hand behind post. City end of the MCG. It's the Tigers by one point. Nine of the last ten inside 50s going to Cats away for Red Z Lending. That's your Triple MC bus super special comments. you got Noodles Brown. And Chris Judd in the back row. The Cats doing all the attacking. Ablett's had plenty of it, too. He has six touches and a major. You might get another opportunity here if they go inside 50 again. Taylor does well at ground level, slips it out sideways. Just flips it by hand to Kelly, but the boundary line beats them all on the outer side. What other numbers do you like on the Red Zeds, too? 
the metres gained for Geelong because when Richmond have won that stat, they've won 15 out of 15 this year. The Cats currently up plus 60 metres in metres gained. Took over three minutes remaining in the first quarter. Friday night footy, prelim final, MCG, one point ball game. The way of the Tigers, Edwards got it to Lambert. Harry Taylor's been really strong on the outer wing. Pumps it down the line, Danger, dropped the mark he should have taken. Went back, ran into Brandon Ellis. Danger got the handball to Menangola. He coughs it up to Basha Hawley. And now they come streaming through the middle. Brandon Ellis' handball, though, chopped off. Zach Tui was huge. Got it to Selwood. Now Henderson and Grimes. Third man in was Baker. The little man got it at ground level. And a little wobbler has found Nathan Broad on defensive 50 for the Tigers. He plays on looking for the skipper, Cochin. He marks on the back flank in front of Parfit. The Cats have kicked the last two to narrow it to a one-point margin. Jeep in the first turn. Revolt, first real signs of him. A strong contested mark in front of Henry. AFL logo, centre wing. He wants to go inside the corridor. Puts Cochin under all sorts of pressure with a terrible handball. He stripped of the footy by Atkins, and that wasn't Jack Revolt's best decision. Oh, a rare mistake of that kind. Normally a very good decision maker, Jack Revolt. The Cats, Brownie pointed out, inside 50 is the last uh, patch. Uh, two men have been enormous the Cats way. Yeah, they've had... 10 out of the last 11. Narkel going to make it 11 in the last 12. Here is Henderson nearly took the mark. Ablett's been really good. Out to Kelly. Looking for his second goal of the term. Oh. Just hit the post. Had a left to right. Bender on it too. And we're all locked away in the prelim final. 3-3, 21 apiece. We've got a minute 40 to go. Triple M Simply Energy scoreboard. Jack Graham's popped his shoulder. And he's down in the rooms. He was the in-swing of Terry Alderman's style too, wasn't yeah. it? Kelly just clipped the inside of the post. Would have given the Cats the lead. Now it's 21 apiece. And Cats fans, if you'd offered them this at the start of the game, they would have said, yes, please. Tui, making all the play in the last 10 minutes. The Cats, O'Connor, hits Narkel. Been good, Narkel. He's too far out to score. Radigalia's deep. Das wants it that way. Now he goes short, not towards Radigalia. But Myers just fell into a hole. And the ball has fallen into his arms. Now, he's an unusual kick for goal. But really, as an AFL player from 30 out directly in front, should kick it. Gee, there's a lot of movement in that Geelong forward line. So often you come and watch them play and they just look stagnant and like there's not enough players leading and creating space. But they are all hyped up tonight and there is a lot of space being created by the Geelong forwards. Well, the young man that used to run to and from school always wanted to be an AFL footballer out of Grovedale. He's had a great debut season. He's kicked one. That unusual hooking style. Brian Myers has got two in the first term of a prelim, if you don't mind. And the Cats are in front. 4-3-27 to the Tigs. 3-3-21. That's all on your Triple M Simple Energy scoreboard. The last 12 minutes has been 12 inside 50s to 1. And Richmond haven't been able to go with Geelong's physicality. Now, they kicked those three goals in a bit of a hurry and you thought, well... Richmond are going okay, but then all of a sudden there was a big moment where Harry Taylor and Tom Stewart stood up in the back line. Since that moment, 12 inside 50s to 1, and I think Geelong have just been too physical for them. Judge, every time Richmond get the footy at the moment, they're being tackled. I remember the, the tackle at Parf laid on the other side on Dustin Martin probably 10 minutes ago. It was a bruising tackle. It was almost like GWS last week. Every time they tackled, they brought someone to the ground, they rubbed their head in the dirt, they made them pay for it. That's how Geelong are playing right now. In the last 12 minutes, Geelong plus 26 in disposals. Richmond have only laid two tackles in that time frame. Yeah, they want the quarter time siren to blow all of a sudden, but here comes Prestia. Drives a long one down in the Lynch direction. He's been the one that looked like he could tear it apart. Jack Henry got back. Won the ball at ground level. Myers kicked the last two goals of the game. Linking play out there with Blitzarves. Myers flicks a handball over the top. Cam Guthrie sends it long down the wing. Southern stand side. Radigalia oh, almost marked it. And the Tigers respond. Hooley got it to Cochin. Gee, they did well. The Tiger defenders to spoil the mark. What a quarter! to get things underway in the first preliminary final. The Cats kick the last three of the match and they lead this one 4-3-27 to the Tigers 3-3-21. A major injury concern for Jack Graham with a shoulder. Any sign of him, Tommy or the Doc? No sign of him, Howie, but the first person out on the ground just then was Chris Scott. It's almost like he can feel the momentum here. A real sense of purpose from the Geelong bench. Richmond with some work to do at quarter time. One goal lead to the Cats at quarter time, 27 to 10, uh, 21. Uh, the Judge and Noodles next for McDonald's. Dribble him. Rocks footy.
Quarter time here at the MCG and all neutral supporters have got the game they wanted. Geelong kicked the last three of the term to reverse a deficit. 4-3-27 of the Tigers, 3-3-21. Brian Myers has got two in his first preliminary final. Bob Jane team outs has a month of big deals on big brands such as Bridgestone, Hancock and BF Goodrich. Some concerns about Dustin Martin or not Tommy Brown and Doc? How he potentially, looks like he suffered a corky early in the quarter which he tried to run out but Doc has noticed he spent the final eight or ten minutes of that quarter on the bench. Doc, what's your initial assessment? He looks a bit frustrated. Well, I think he's frustrated not being out there, Tom. Uh, he was doing some run-throughs on the side, showing the coaches he's OK, but uh, he did cop a knock to the lower leg, which uh, brought him off in the first five or ten minutes of the game. I think that's the only thing can be uh, hampering him. I don't think he's got any issues with his hamstring, his uh, sort of burst of speeds, no problems. But look, Jack Bryan's still down the rooms and uh, not looking good down there with Dr Greg Hickey still. We think he's got a dislocated shoulder. And he has a history of this, Tom. He dislocated his shoulder last year, missed a week or two, but uh, it could be a recurrent injury. At this point in time, he probably will not take any further part in the game, but we'll watch, wait and see. That's why those two boys are the best. Triple M Red Dead Lending stats. Red Dead Lending loan special for the self-employed. you got Chiwopolo. Myers, number one ranked player on the ground. Seven disposals and two majors. Dangerfield, leading ball winner with ten touches. And here's Judge and Noodles. Look, I thought Geelong had a really good start. To that quarter, Paddy Dangerfield had the 10 touches, but he had three tackles, including one in the first contest of the game, and I think he really set the scene, particularly physically, for Geelong, and that's where, in many ways, they got on top of Richmond. Even in the clearances, they were nine each, but when you bring in two genuine bona fide ruckmen into the team like Richmond have with Nan Curvis and Saldo, they need to be far ahead of Geelong in the clearances for that transaction to make sense. Tom Brown? I mentioned a potential uh, infringement on the interchange bench when Graham came off. The AFL officials and the emergency umpires have been having a discussion with both benches at quarter time. I don't think there's much in it because Graham is unlikely to take further part in the game but the umpires will watch that. It's the award winning Tommy Brown down there. Cleaned up the AFL Media Awards. Really? Won the uh, big award for the best uh, television and radio reporter. Oh, well done Tommy. Breaking big stories down there. Want to do our own Tommy Brown. Well done Tom. I reckon the big stat of that first quarter, Duke, was 25 more disposals for the Cats. 20 tackles to 12 in favour of the Cats. They were harder around the footy. That's Brown, Chris Judd, with the two man. Howie, we're ready to go in the second quarter. The Cats by six points. Grime Myers, as Chewy told you, number one player on the ground. Here he goes again, the little oh. man. Handball out to Tim Kelly. Got around a tackle. Vlotstone, Tim Kelly towards the punt right end. Kelly's got two. And the Cats are on fire in the prelim. Perfect start. 24 seconds it took in the second quarter, and they are 5 3 33. The Tigers 3 3 21 on the Triple M Beaumont tile scoreboard. That was just brilliant by Brian Myers. He swooped on a loose ball, handballed it out, it got intercepted, followed up with a second and third effort, got the ball back again. The thing about finals football is you get to see if people are what they say they are. In home and away games, p players can play well. They can come up against weak opposition and have a good game. But that doesn't happen in a prelim final. And Brian Myers is doing his reputation a huge service tonight because he is the most dominant player on this ground at this stage. It's not like us to blow our own trumpet, uh, Judge, but we did say small forwards get the job done against Richmond. Two to Grind Myers, two to Kelly, and one to Ablett so far of the five. I don't know what they're going to do, the Cats, but they need to keep Tim Kelly in Geelong somehow because he is having a great preliminary final. Oh, Guthrie just steps around three Tigers, almost Pendlebury-like. Puts one up the chimney inside, 50, Henderson... Brought to ground by Grimes. Hasn't really been a factor so far. It's like a one intercept mark. The Tigers are right under the pump working in defence. Comes out towards Selwood. It's a shoveling kick inside 50. Asprey uses his body. Tigers under all sorts of pressure. It's holding the ball. Holding the ball. Going the way of the Cats. Wow. What did you see, Noodles? Well, it was just a really good tackle. It was incorrect disposal. It was a good call by the umpire. He was right on the scene there, and well done by Dangerfield. I mean, there's 95,000 people here. You get the footy, the whistle blows. Would have been easy to throw it on the left foot boot under pressure, but he just held it up, put it above his head, and now they've got a, a kick 25 metres out directly in front. On the boot of Blitzars for five in a row for the Cats. It's those moments in the big finals. Geelong 5-3, Richmond 3-3, two-goal margin. Triple M Beaumont tile yeah. score. Well, Bob Jane, Tommy Brown. Jack Graham is back on the bench with a heavily strapped shoulder. Is he any chance of playing, Doc? Well, we'll see, Tommy. That's a miracle uh, recovery. We'll keep a close eye on this. Dusty Martin's just taken a ripping contested mark at half-back and then go on the running barrel, which went 65, only to be marked at half-back by Reese Stanley. 
Can you the umpire calling Reese to play on? He's going to send it down the southern stand wing side. Radigalia. Oh, the mark was pretty much there. Play on was the call. We managed to get it to Kelly. High ball down the line. Ablett. Broad. Ablett won it at ground level. Good tackle applied by Basha Hooley. Really good tackle. And Hooley comes up with a big play on Ablett at half back. Tigers want the next goal in this one. They've given up the last four. Geelong just dominating Chewy on the Red Zeds. Yeah, those inside 50 numbers, they've now had 13 out of the last 15. Wow. It's a massive number in a prelim shoot, especially when it's the favourites that have given them up. Stanley, massive fist on the ball. Everything going right for the Cats. Goes to Selwood, then Kelly. Dane, you feel, with a little chipper inside. 50, really well done by Vloston. And you figure that's what the Tigers need to do, Juddy. Just get a bit of possession. Yeah, they just, they're not dealing with Geelong's pressure and even just a bit of kick mark play. So they had the ball in their hands, which looks like they're trying to do now. She's flossed and tried to bite off a big one at Cotchin through the corridor. Copped it up again. Kelly's handball comes out. Dalhouse got time to get it back to Sell with the skipper. Standing start, flight goal, just missed. Wow. That could have been another two goals starting to get in the concerning range. 5 5 35, 3 3 21. We're early stage of second quarter, but the Cats have got all the play on the triple in Beaumont tile scoreboard. Could easily be a four-goal margin. Blitzarv missed one. He'd normally kick Selwood with a quick snap. It was 50-50. Hooley just trying to take some heat out of the footy at full back. He's got no options. The Cats are that well structured. He has to kick to a contest on the near wing. Lynch, who started the game brilliantly with two goals, flies from behind. Kelly's going to get another inside 50 ball. Not his best. Goes across the line, though. The catch will be happy. It's inside 50, 40 round from their goal. Jack Graham, Bob Jane, T-Mart. Is he going to come on, you think, Tommy? I was going to defer to the doc. I don't know yet. He's still on the bench. I think he is a chance, especially if he's had that jab. So uh, I'm taking on the doc's role here. I'm speculating, but I think he's a chance, guys. Yeah, he's standing up, Tommy, in the interchange. He's got his number held up. Jack Graham, had his shoulder looked like it was completely dislocated. Strapped up. He's going to go back out there. They're tough. The modern player, Cochin. Spears it looking for Dangerfield. Hughes got in front. Danger had to go the fist and they get it to half forward. The Tigers boundary thrown as Jack Graham emerges back on the ground. Juddy, someone who's dealt with shoulders. Yeah, and he is holding that right shoulder in a very awkward looking way. And uh, if you're Geelong and you're smart, you need to try and be putting him in one on one marking situations away from other players and using that Geelong player. He has not moved that arm no. as yet. He's attempted a tackle there. He's sort of running one armed, if you can picture what I'm saying. Well done by Short. Keeps it in the Tigers. Just getting a bit of possession in the last minute. But it's going to be Geelong easily down the line to Taylor. How's he looking there, uh, old mate Jack Graham, Doc? He's winged, Howie. He's got a wing. Yeah, Tommy Stewart played on, sold himself in a real trouble. Lucky to get away with it. Buse came in to save the day. We'll keep an eye on Jack Graham with the dock. He is playing through enormous pain. The Cats have got it on the outer side. Henry, stuttering start, then decided to pull the trigger down the line. Blitz halves. Little Liam Baker back there. Took the ball nicely, got it to Caddy. This is the sort of Tigers play that we expected, that surging handball, but the Cats got all the answers at the moment, and Henry was able to wrap up Lambert, take him over the boundary line, and Brownie, that surge play, the handball forward, haven't got it going yet, the Tigers. No, they haven't, and Geelong are doing that better than them, and this is exactly what they did to West Coast last week. The ground ball gets at the moment. They're ravenous for the footy at the moment, and they're just having a few doubts at the moment. The Tigers, exactly what you said before the start of the game, Drew. If Geelong can start well, the Tigers will start to think, hang on, what if? Can this happen again? And right now it is. So Richmond need to get steady. They need to be able to get the ball in their hands. They haven't had the ball in their hands a lot in this first and second quarter. So they just need to slow the game down a bit. Ravenous noodles. Great adjective. Thank you. Describing what's going on. Radigalia sits on top of the footy. Now Soldo tries to extract it from a pack. Finally comes out to Parfit to Selwood. Numbers two, Red Z. 12 touches. Yeah, that's a good one. Two on the left. Really opens it up for Harry Taylor. He just goes a little slider down the line. Good pressure from Short, but it comes back to Harry Taylor. Oh, it's a barrel inside 50. Myers, did he get a shove? He did. So Myers on a tight angle. Well, that'll favour his sort of little right foot suckling style kick. Not sure if he can get the journey from there, Hal. No, that might be his issue. He'll line up. He'll have to kick it from 44. 
on about a 45 degree angle. Oh, Zach Dewey he wants the hand pass, takes the responsibility, unloads and hooks it. Not really much awareness from the Tigers defenders. No real damage done. So the Cats have missed three or four opportunities. They lead at 36 to 21, out of 15 points on the Triple M Beaumont tile scoreboard. Beaumont's mega floor clearance is on now. You'll save heaps and be happy you chose Beaumont. The scoreboard could be a whole lot worse. If they were accurate. They've missed the last three shots. All gettable now. Can the Tigers get one back? Presti at a Lynch. This one's at half forward. Bolton slaps it forward. Lambert can't keep it in under pressure. They managed to get it from full back to their forward 50 pretty quickly. It's going to be thrown in right there. Played eight minutes in this second quarter. 15 point lead to the Cats on the Triple M Beaumont tile scoreboard. Don't seem to be able to get it past half forward at the moment, Noodles the Ticks. Yeah, they're struggling with the footy in their hand at the moment. Stanley tries to extract it. Now Parfit does the same on the defensive point of the square for the Cats. Clever little kick from Edwards, but Parfit again is aware of it. It's a contested ball situation on the wing and then the umpire will separate them. Dusty Martin's gone deep forward and Henry's got the nervous job of standing next to uh, the dangerous number four. They just can't get the ball down there at the minute, Richmond. Geelong have had seven inside 50s this quarter. Richmond yet to have one. Free kick out of the ruck situation. Reece Stanley's been a much talked about player, Reece Stanley. And he's been very good so far in this game. Clearance has been 14 to 9 in favour of Stanley's side, Duke. And he's doing his job. Yeah, problems with that. That's not a great kick from Parfit. Picked out Bashar Hooli. And the Tigers have got the experience of Bashar now. Just to. Oh, how he's been saying, maybe they just need to hang on to the footy for a while. Not 15's the call. Have to rush it down the line. Lynch again. Too big, too strong, too good. He's been their winner so far. Castagna, Brandon Ellis, Jack Rewald, good shape. Kent went back with a flight. Henry got a fist in. Now Buse. Tiger Fords can put some pressure on the Cats. Tiger fans want holding the footy. Empire says, no, give it to me. And it'll be thrown up 30 metres out from the Tiger goal. Haven't had it in there a lot, Duke, but when they do, they certainly look dangerous with Lynch and Rewalk going back there. I reckon there might have been a Falcon. I like to see the Triple M Bosch Tools replay. It was definitely some sort of head work. Lynch by hand, snaps it across towards Bolton. And he misses from 20. I think Buse was a bit lucky there on the Triple M Bosch Tools replay, not to be done for holding the pill. Richmond 3-4, finally they get a score. Geelong 5-6, up by 14 points on the Triple M Beaumont tile scoreboard. Tommy Stewart, fullback kick in, all Australian again this year, back to back seasons. And Reese Stanley back takes a good mark. Back one metre, thank you. Sends it from half back down the line, or Ablett taken off the footy by Vlosto. And by Sean Ryan. You can hear there, mic'd up exclusively for Triple M, and I think he might have got a little compliment from his mate Ray Chamberlain saying, Good work, Sean. Well ex done. Excellent, Sean. Mm. Excellent. I like it. So now, deep in defence, the Tigers. Ashbury, again, he's forced to kick to a contest. This one's a two-on-one, favouring the opposition. Gazza's out the back. Cochin picks his pocket, does well. Trent Cochin gets it by foot to Ellis. He launches a ball down towards Martin. He's going to get this in the goal square, Dustin Martin. That was a 60-metre ball from Brandon Ellis. It was quite wonderful, Nate. It was an ordinary effort from Gary Ablett. He needed to pick that footy up. He didn't really want the body contact, which he's been good so far, Abler, but that's been the question mark about him in recent times, and that was not good enough. In a big game like this, he knows how big it is. He's played in so many times, but Cochin took that footy away from him far too easy. Martin from 20 out on a 45-degree angle to kick his second, and the Tigers need it. Opens up the face and misses. Big moments in the prelim. Just about put that one in the book. The Cats 5-6, Richmond 3-5, still 13 points, Triple M Beaumont tile scoreboard. Beaumont's mega floor clearance is on now. You'll save heaps and be happy you chose Beaumont. Zach Tui, fullback kick in. Sends a long one, Harry Taylor direction, easily worked underneath it by Lostone. Gonna come back, the Tigers have settled a little bit. Still trail by 13 points. Lostone, where's Lynch? Rewalt's going to go front and centre, and that's exactly where he gets it. Immediately dumped by Selwood. Supreme effort from the inspirational skipper. Perfect tackle executed deep in defence. Started to even up, Judge the Tigers. Not on the scoreboard, though. No, it sort of evens up for the couple of Geelong misses that they are. They were very kickable chances, so 
Game on here. Radigalia. Came late, but Dangerfield took a good contested mark. In front of Lostone, half back line. Triple M Red Zeds for the danger. 12 disposals and four clearances, three out of the middle. Who's leading them all, Chu? We've got 14 to Kelly along with his two goals and for the Tigers, 11 oh. apiece to Hooley and Prestia. Yeah, that's something. A piercing ball across the open goal from Tui to Henry. He now goes to O'Connor. Got some runners out the outer side here. Southern stand wing is Guthrie. He loves to run with it, takes a couple of bounces. Now Spears a kick down. Henderson's the deepest forward. Out the back. They're going to get a goal here for sure. The Cats. Knuckle picks it up and gets a gift. Cats have now kicked the last five goals of the game. Dusty Munn's coming off again. He's got a bit of a corky. It's all happening at the MCG. 6 6 42. 3 5 23 on the Triple M Beaumont tile scoreboard. Well, the same thing is starting to happen that happened last year in the prelim. They started to make mistakes that you haven't seen them make the whole entire year. On that occasion, the Guthrie kick came in. Five Richmond players probably flew in that pack, Judge. Not one of them touched the footy. The ball got out at the back. There was two easy players standing there. It was an easy goal in the end, but the mistake was made in the pack. Five Richmond players charged at the footy on the Triple M Bosch Tools replay. Not one of them touched the footy. Just with the play-ons for Red Zed, so Geelong are ranked 18th in the competition. They only play on 18% of the time, but tonight they're tracking at 41%. Wow. Woo. The Monopoly game at Maccas is back, and bigger than ever, visit maccasplay.com.au for full terms. You said, would it come back to haunt them for to last year's prelim if they got behind to ask the Tigers? It's shaping that way at the moment. Long way to go. The number 48, Liam Baker, with a wobbler to the outer side. This is better. Now the Tigers move it across the outer flank. But it's a wobbly inside 50 ball. Cotton Ola limping Jasmine. in the middle. All right, we'll keep an eye on that. Guthrie drops it down the line to Myers. Nice fist away from Basha Hawley. Where is he? Trent Cotchen. In the middle of the ground there. He's really sore, Brownie, isn't he? Yep. Triple M Bosch Tools replay screen. He's got a heavy limp up. Have a look so at this Triple M Bosch Tools replay right now. He came through the pack at that stoppage, and I reckon he just popped oh. one on the, on the shin. From Joel Selwood. It was a heavy hit. Amazed that Joel Selwood is still out there and he's fine. He's smashing in after the footy. Are you? Yeah, no, fair point. <laughs> it is Joel Selwood. Lambert. Going to punch this one deep inside forward 50. It's all Geelong back there. Colin Jasney, the easiest intercept mark he'll take in a prelim final. Not a great kick. He's mucked that. Oh, look at Graham when he's trying to get two arms up. Yeah, couldn't do it. Graham's managed to kick the ball back inside 50. Juddy had a good look at him there. Good effort to be out there. He didn't even put his right arm up. He cannot lift it uh, even up to his shoulder height. So, so what uh, could he do, Judge? I mean, obviously they want the rotation. So what's his go right now in the game? Well, it's interesting they're trying to use him as an inside midfielder at times, which is hard because he can't tackle, but I just don't think they want to see him get exposed on the outside. So... Probably play up forward, try and get in some dangerous spots and get some uncontested ball is as good as he could hope for. Gee, it's a tough mental battle though, Judge. Only trying to get over the physical pain he's experienced, knowing that even if his team get through, he's very little chance of being involved next week. And if he stays out there, that shot will pop out three or four times for the rest of the game and hopefully pop back in. So very good effort what he's up to. Selwood. He's had a couple of great finals the last two, Joel Selwood. Stewart. Called his name a great deal, but he's very calm with ball in hand. That was the last couple of inside 50 entries from the Tigers. They were just kicking in hope, and Geelong just snapped them up. Jack Henry's got the footy at halfback. They've been able to score the three times they've switched the ball. They've been pretty much straight down the line most of the night tonight, but when they have switched the footy like they have now, the Cats, they usually score. They led it by 19 points, and the switch is on again. Dak Tui finds Selwood through the middle of the MCG. Narkle, and as Brownie pointed out, with great insight, they have opened them up when they've changed direction. Selwood, he's got a man he wants in the pocket. Out the back man and Gola, not paid the mark. Parfit with some time twisting and turning. Not a great handball to Guthrie. Tigers on mass arrive. Rioli won a really good contested ball. Squeeze the handball out to Ellis. Now this is Edwards at half back. Can they get it through? Lambert searching for it. Tackled by O'Connor. Selwood first to the line, and eventually it goes over right in front of Tommy Brown and the Doc. Let's get down to Dr. Ron White. Big story, does Dr. Ron White just picked this. Trent Cochin isn't improving. He's just come off, Doc. Yeah, that knock to that lower leg is really sore. Last two or three minutes, he tried to run it out, but in fact, he got worse, Tom, so that's a real bad sign. He's with Dr. Greg Hickey as we speak. So they've got Graham with one arm, Martin with a bit of a corky. Now Cochin with an issue with his 
Lower leg. Dusty moving all right there. Hand pass to Rioli. Soldo now it's opening up for the Tigers. They go back towards Castagna. His kick is smothered. He has a second crack at it. Does well. Castagna hits 45. Takes a bounce. Runs around one man. It'll be one of the great goals. He went too far. Comes in towards Dusty Martin though. His kick is smothered. Geelong a fantastic in defence. Brilliant smother. Sam Menangola. Dusty was going the right foot check side. It looked like it was on line, Brown here. Men and Gola, heroic effort. Yeah, he dived on it, didn't he? Great smother. But there was also one at the 50 metre line just before that as well. 6 6 42, 3 5 23, 19 point lead to the Cats. 18 go on second term. Dangerfield defending. About 30 out from his own goal. This is Buse now trying to get through Rioli. Selwood's been really big, par fit. And a boundary throw on Joel Selwood's not so far, please, true man. Red Zed Lending, he's had 17 disposals and a couple of clearances, leading ball winner on the ground. In the last six or seven minutes, it's been dominated by Richmond. Geelong have had a couple of entries, but they're weathering the storm right now, the Cats. If they can get away in the next couple of minutes without a Richmond goal or a retaliation and get down the other end and sneak one themselves, this would be massive. They've kicked the last five goals, the Cats. They lead it by 19 points. You've got 6.24 to go before half time. Myers to Ablett. Richmond have got the numbers for the ball. Well done by Asprey. Chops it off. He's got Baker. Now this is an important kick. Runs right across the face. Baker. He wobbles it out towards a man else who's been good. He's got the hard running Grimes trying to open up an option. And he finds him nicely. Dylan Grimes on defensive 50. And he's wobbled one Back to Brandon Ellis at half back. Just the little things as well. They're making hard work of it, the Tigers. Seven of the last nine inside 50s, Richmond for Red Zed Lending, but they've only scored two behinds. Oh, Hooley's kick. Little fingernail on it, Atkins. And that's enough to turn it over. Henderson's now got it. He's a big kick, Lockie Henderson. 55 out from goal. And he's signaled to the umpire, Juddy. Are those and old legs capable? No, no, he's given it to Tui. Straight away, as Juddy predicted, to Zach Tui. Bombs to the goal square. Grimes can't take the mark on their last line of defence. Asprey has seen it through for a rush behind. So the Cats go to 6-7-43. The Tigers are 3-5-23. 20-point lead to Geelong. Triple M, Beaumont tile scoreboard. How's Cochin looking with that lower leg issue, Doc? Bob Jane? Yeah, got uh, some heavy strapping down there. Still moving very ginger. Martin's out. He takes one bound. 60 from home. Dustin Martin. He's going to go all the way with a wobbly mung. It's horrible from Dusty. He has not kicked one the right spinning method tonight so far, Howard. And he hit Stewart on the chest. Looked like an absolute hey, roll of gold opportunity like to score. 11. Sorry, Brownie, what do you got there? I was just commenting to Tunners that it looked like a floater you see at the under 11s, uh, Howie. Right, but you decided to broadcast at the world and I enjoyed it. Old snorkel in the back row is doing some specials. <laughs> Here is Reece Stanley. The Cats have gone deep inside 50. Adler, the one on one. He got rid of Grimes. The little master from the oh, pocket floats it across. Radigalia. Oh, oh Broad was superb there. Two against one. Managed to get a timely fist in and save the day. Boundary throw in this game. He's on a knife edge at the moment. Last five goals, the Cats lead it by 20 points. 21 go on second term. Triple M Beaumont tile score, boy. Tommy Brown gone the dusty munged it like he was in the under 11s. Yeah. Bit of special comments. Narkel and Grind Myers standing on their own on the other side of this pack. And it's Nathan Brown alongside Chris Judd. The Triple M C bus supers. Rioli picks a pocket. Hurried hand pass Bolton. Clever tap. Out of trouble. Prestia started the game well. Selwood's got him. He's eating him up. Gets back towards Myers. Dalhouse to step. A shimmy, a jig to Stanley. Doesn't have any of that. So he drops it long. Richmond should have the numbers in defence. Oh, oh man, and goal is out, Mark, too, has he? Hit the ground. Gee whiz. Now Baker, free kick. Downfield to go the way of the Tigers. We've got four minutes on the clock. And it's Geelong leading 6-7 to 3-5 by 20 points. They've kicked the last five, the Cats. Trent Cotchen. Back out on the field. Wouldn't say that he's running freely. Mm. We'll get a summation from the dock in a minute. Just exactly what the Tigers have got to deal with as well in the second half. They try by 20 points. Bashul has put it out to Cochin. And Dowhouse, that was agricultural, that one. Gave away a free kick. Now Cochin got a bit more better movement in his body. All of a sudden, Bashul releasing kick to Lynch. They've got to get this man in the play. He's got two goals at their three. And he looked in really good form. Dusty Martin's deep. Cats have rolled a lot of numbers back, so the short ones on the Vlostone. Jack Revolt's numbers too. 
He's only had the one handball, Howie, and scoreless, of course. Okay. I had a figure if he's <laughs> Yep, <laughs> I said, of course. Thank you. Hooley from 60. Takes a bit off the kick. It's a brilliant ball from Basha Hooley. And then he's hit Castagna. 35 out directly in front. And this man is in this side to kick these goals. Look at all the Geelong defenders who are looking out of the corner of their eye at Tom Lynch. Or, or big Ivan Saldo or Jack Revolt waiting for the long option. And really good vision there by Basha Hooley just to spot Castagna. This is a big Jogging into a, uh, into a pocket in their 450. Not the best set shot either, Howard. No, he's not. The Tigers' season, hanging on by a thread, needs to kick this. Does Castagna. Slow, deliberate approach. Kicks the goal. Much needed for the yellow and black. Richmond break a run of five. And kick their fourth. 4-5, four, 29. The catch 6-7-43. Back to 14 points. 2.15 on the clock before the major break on your Triple M Beaumont tile scoreboard. And he's celebrating with his teammates, Castagna, on the Triple M Bosch Tools replay. Good, better Bosch, professional power tools, measuring tools and accessories. Definitely feels like there's been a, a bit of a shift in the last 10 minutes. Judge Richmond have dominated possession, haven't been able to put on the scoreboard. They've kicked one goal, two from 10 inside 50s, where Cats did have a couple of locks and a couple of good opportunities, but there's definitely a momentum shift right now in favour of the Tigers. Huge goal that was for the Tigers. And a long time run of five. That one interrupted for the Cats. We're back to a 14 point game. We've got two minutes and 15 until half time. And that is not really a margin that's a concern. The game has felt like it's been a lot more Geelong's way. Martin shins it forward. In the way, O'Connor wrapped up immediately in a tackle at centre forward. And you can see umpire Ray Chamberlain demanding the footy. Thank you. He's thrown up at centre like forward. Soldo. Rhys Stanley. Now O'Connor. To half forward. Radigalia. Been very good so far. Broad. Atkins. Had 24 tackles in a game in the VFL. Did Tommy Atkins. Applied a very good one there. Spills out in the ablet direction. Can he get past Broad? Picked it up. Wanted to find Narkel. Narkel ends up uh, applying a tackle on Asprey. Got taken the full. 360, but the correct decision is to throw well, it up. Sure Cats up. deep in attack. Coming. We got 141 on the clock. The, the Tigers the will be defending with everything the they've got. They've kicked the last to break a run of five. They trail by 14 points. Soldo clears the area. Dowhouse is awake to it. Nice tackle from Caddy. Back towards Selwood. Steps one, tackle steps two. He's gone. Had to be gone. Ray got him on the third one. And that's the Tigers up in the defensive pressure. Minute 28 remaining in the game at half back. The ball in the hands of Caddy. Centering kick. Some contest applied here. And it was Blitzar who took possession. Soldo wrapped him up. It's just a slight thing. Attacking half the centre wing for the Cats. Immediately thrown up by Ray Chamberlain. Slapped forward by Stanley. Lukey Dalhouse. Guthrie. Look at the speed. Got past Baker and good attempt. Just missed again. 6 8 44, 4 5 29. Cats leading it with 57 seconds until half time. The Triple M Beaumont Tile scoreboard. Fantastic last week, Cam Guthrie. And he's taken that roll on again. Now the Tigers just wobble the ball forward. Stewart, aka the brick wall, marks across the wing there's 45 seconds on the clock Tigers will start to flood men back do that now big marking contest free kick push Ray Dangerfield 50 oh wow Razor an enormous decision Jeez. waited till every eyeball was on him Ray and said danger take it to the goal line Wow. What was that for on the Triple M Bosch tool? On the second whistle, not to kick it away. Handballed it to Basher, not to Dangerfield. 50 metre penalty. The mark is on the line, okay? Wow. Dangerfield will kick the goal. And it'll be 21 points in the shadows of half time here. You heard the explanation from Ray. The free kick was there. The free kick was right. He got pushed in the back, but... Gee, I'm not sure about the 50 metre penalty. It's loud out here and you wouldn't have known what way it was going. Danger from the top of the goal square to hurt the Tigers in the shadows of half time. 
It's another one for the Cats. They're seven. They lead this one 50 to 29 by 21 points with five seconds on the clock before half time. That's a big decision and a big turning point in this game. There, you're right, Howard. You're absolutely right. There are some goals that feel like they're worth more than six points. And on the uh, dawn of half time, Geelong's best player, Paddy Dane, oh, Field. Let's have a look at the Triple M Boss Tools replay, Judge. Sorry. Basher Hawley thought it was his free kick, so he's put his hand up for Trent Cochin to handball the back ball back to him. So he thought he had the free kick push in the back. Cochin gives it to him, then the 50 metre penalty is paid. Paddy Dangerfield and Dusty Martin having a little crack here at the moment. There's some elevated tension out there. Danger's just giving it to him. He can't believe he got that 50 metre penalty. The halftime siren's going to sound. Stanley won the tap out, and there it is. And listen to the Tiger fans, what they think about this scoreline. 7 8 50 the Cats, 4 5 29 the Tigers, 21 point lead at half time. And this has got some controversy attached to it. We'll get down to Dr. Owen White if we can. There's also some injury concerns, Doc. Can you give us a snapshot of what's happened so far in the first half? Yeah, it's all on the uh, Tigers' side of the ledger, Luke. And, uh, of course, Jack Grimer had that right shoulder dislocation halfway through the first quarter. He spent about 20 minutes down the room. He's back out there, struck with a painkiller, but he is winged. He is only working with one arm at the moment, looking very restricted. At best, he's 60%. Trek Conchick got that nasty knock to the lower leg. He's still very proppy, got it strapped, but he's still running at about 80%, still very proppy. And, of course, Dustin Martin. We're not sure what's going on, but he's just not the usual Dustin Martin. Possibly the sequelae to that knock in the lower leg in the first quarter. It's all on Richmond's side. Ah, uh, Dr. Rowan White, the best in the business. Great to have him. Finals time. Bob Jane t Martin says a month of big deals on Big Browns, Bridgestone, Hancock and B of Goodridge. Nate Brown, Chris Judd, the two man. How he's in ripping calling form. This prelude final is red hot. 7 8 50. That's the Cats. The Tigers trial by 21 points, 4 5 29. You just heard their injury concerns. It's thanks to McDonald's. The Cats by 21 points at half time. Triple M Rocks footy. Half time here at the mighty MCG. The first preliminary final. It's the Cats who have kicked six of the last seven goals of this match. They led it by six points at quarter time, 21 at the half. Geelong, 7 8 50. Richmond, 4 5 29. Let's hear it. Neil Balm with Daisy Pierce, courtesy of Seven, about the Tigers and their injury situation. Neil, thanks for joining us. Plenty happening on the bench. Can you give us an update on your injuries? Yeah, Jack Graham's got a, a bit of a dislocation to his shoulder. It's um, he's not, he's he's pretty sore, but he's not completely out of the game at this stage. He went back on. It's probably not ideal, but we'll just see how he goes. He he, he could well play a part, but it's not that not great for him, obviously. Uh, the one we're all watching as well is Dusty. Anything to report there? No, no, he's fine. Yeah, he's good. Seem to have some trouble with the knee. No treatment at half time that you know uh, of? I, no, they didn't mention it to me. I so assume I might have got a whack on it. But Good luck in the second half. All the best. Thanks, Daisy. Yeah, he looked like he got a bit of a quad in uh, a cork in his quad. IJ Liquor have got you covered these footy finals. Get your favourite beer, wine, and spirits. Head to ijliquor.com.au to find your nearest store. Plus, they've got recipes, inspiration. And promotions, IJ Liquor, proudly independent. You know what the kids call inspiration these days, Joe? No, I don't. Inspo. There you go. They say, I'm looking for a bit of Inspo noodles. Are you across that one? That's a heuristic, oh. is it? No, I'm not. Is that a what? It's a heuristic. What's a heuristic, Guru? The shortcut. Yeah, well, it is a bit of a heuristic. It's called a shortcut, though. Yeah. I don't think you need to use... An, hu- an abbreviation, maybe. You spell heuristic. H-E-U, and the rest is spelt phonetically. Istic. Okay. So is it a Y or I-S-T-I-C? I S T I C. Okay. Well, let's talk about tomorrow's game. You were the trained journalist here. No, I'm not a trained journalist. I told you well, that the other now day. Now it starts to show. I, I never claimed to be. Now one. you've been exposed. I never. I told you I did a business degree, <laughs> and what a waste of my life that was. Accounting and economics. Hey, now tomorrow, good. Yes. The GWS can they upset the pies? Well, I would have said no, but then I would have said that the Cats can't upset Richmond today. So, Giants are stacked full of elite talent. Still, some of them haven't yet fired a shot in this final series. I don't think Kelly's hit his best form yet. We know they've got a couple of their big guns out. But, yeah, they can provide an upset tomorrow, but I think the Pies will get the job done. What do you think, Noodle Boy? Well, it's a bruising type of footy they play. If they can continue to do what they're doing in terms of how brutal they're going about it, yes, they can win Howard. We'll be there on the M's alongside the great man Barry Denner. Who's doing specials with you? Uh, Lee Montagna. Are you there, Chewy, tomorrow? I will be there tomorrow, Howie. All right. The Saturday rub starts at midday, and then our coverage follows on from that. So that'll be nice. All right. Set for a second half start here.
It is a 21-point lead to the Cats. What do you think the numbers in the crowd are, Chewy? Yeah, 95,000, I reckon, Howie. Ooh, all right. Triple M, IJ Licker scoreboard. IJ Licker proudly independent. Sees the Cats lead at 7.850 to Richmond, 4.529. Here's our fearless leader, Luke Darcy. Ready to get the second half underway, Howie. What a game it looks to be. A winner. Tim. Straight through to the grand final, Brownie. Tim Kelly's been outstanding tonight, Duke, but I reckon he spent most of his time inside forward 50. He's played pretty much the whole year, 100% on ball. But right now, tonight, pretty much, I reckon, 95% of his nights been played forward. Paddy Dangerfield starting the centre bounce. Cam Guthrie ready to go with the skipper, Joel Zerwood. On the other side, Trent Cotchin copped a very, very heavy knock to the shin. He was back out there after that. Shane Edwards pressed here. And the two ruckmen is going to be Stanley and Big Ivan Soldo it is. And by Sean Ryan, perfect bounce. Second half underway. The Cats by 21 points. Selwood, brilliantly done. Stanley tried the don't argue. Suggest that's not really... What he needs to be doing is pressed here down the line and Lynch, beautiful pair of hands. And that's a big play. It should have been going the other way. Stanley probably should have got booted the ball in hindsight. Yeah, he just needed to get the ball in his boot at the start of quarters. The pressure's going to be right up, but a brilliant tackle by the Richmond captain all the same. Tom Lynch kicked two first quarter goals. Kicked them back to back. Started the season really underdone, coming off serious knee surgery. And he is just built into a Eight, superb seven, first up year for the Tigers. Played every game this year. It's his first ever finals campaign, Tom Lynch. 155th game of AFL footy, and he doesn't let them down. Tom Lynch has got three, and the Tigers struck the first blow of the second half. 5-5-35, 5, 5, 7 8 50, 15 point lead to the Cats on the Triple M I Jellica scoreboard. Perfect start for the Tigers, and that just puts a little bit of doubt back in the Cats' mind now. They've been dominant along for most of the game but less than a minute in a big tackle the crowd erupted the kick down to Lynch and there's nothing Harry Taylor could have done on that occasion the kick was so good the ball movement came in so quickly he's a wonderful kick but right now you'd have some doubts if you're a Geelong player they've kicked the first goal of the second half and they're back to within 15 points and that's Noodles Brown alongside the Judd man Triple M Seabus super special comments Seabus super offering members insurance cover that protects Building construction workers. A couple of nice finishes from Lynch tonight with the heat really on. Jack Graham, has he started on the bench? Uh, Doc, can you see down there? Yes, yeah, Harry on the bench and still not moving that right arm particularly well. All right, as Neil Baum said, I'm not sure how much we can take further part in the game. This is the Tigers again through Hawley. That's a nice little slider towards Rioli. Hardly called his name this evening, Daniel Rioli, Chewy. Only six possessions. Okay, men and goal with a looping hand pass in defence to Henry. Now two, he's under pressure. Does well by hand to Selwood. And now O'Connor with a little wobbly ball to go out on the full. So a nice positive start for the Tigs. Basher Hooley to bring it back in. Right in front of the interchange race. Members wing side, MCG Basher Hooley. Pumps it down the line. Rewalt's been quiet. Massaged off the ball he was by Collar Jasney. Jack comes back in, slaps it down. Selwood's clever handball over the top to Henry. Now this is better Tigers pressure. Shane Edwards. And they trap it in their forward half of the ground with some strong work. Bosch Tools replay. Any free kick there, Brandon, to Jack Rewald? No, Jack Rewald stage for that one. It's only two and a half minutes in, but the Tigers look energised like they weren't in the first half. Martin spins it round with a high wobbler inside. 50 lynches out number two oh. on one. Pay the mark. Who are they going to pay it to? Is it Tommy Lynch. Is it Lynch? Lynch? It's Lynch. Marked it in between a cat sandwich. And the man that's come from the Gold Coast, the Dust said, started slowly. He's lining up for four in his first ever prelim final. Well, we're witnessing something big, Howard. It's not just four, it's four from potentially six goals. And that was a 2v1. To have your big man take a contested mark like that in a big game is absolutely priceless. He's been kicking nicely tonight. Don't want to moz him, but this is only 30 out directly in front. It's a kick two to open the second half. Lynch leans back on it, waits on it, and misses it. Massive moments. The Tigers. 5-6-36, Geelong, 7-8-50. Zach Tui. AJ, look at the scoreboard. Fullback kick in. Got it out to Blitzars. Played it pretty well. Advantage been paid. The Cats maybe wasn't a whole heap of advantage in itself. We were sold into trouble. They've turned it over now. Jaden Short on the outer wing. 
Switches back in board, then dumps a long kick. Rewald out the oh. back. Dusty Martin straight into an open goal. He's got two. Tigers have got the first two of the second half. And Chris got a bit to think about. 6 6 42. 7 8 50. Eight point lead to the Cats. Triple M.I. Tell the scoreboard. All the way for the replay, but I reckon Jack Rewalt went up and deliberately punched that down to Dustin Martin. The degree of difficulty was enormous because it was a 60 metre bomb in, but definitely got the hand out, and that is as good a football as you'll see. He's been very quiet, Jack Rewalt. But that little bit of brilliance there has brought the Tiger Army to life, and that's the sort of thing that can change the course of games. Bashar Hooli, he's the number one ranked player for the Tigers. 19 possessions, six intercept, and he's going to 86% by foot, is Hooli. Gee, man, what does Jack Revolt get for that? Because that's the best bit of footy of the evening. Yeah, yeah goal assist for Red Z. Gee whiz. Well called, Noodles. It was a perfect fist right to his man Martin. Now the Tigers again, they look to clear it out of the middle. Soldo. Can he pick it up? Parfit's got him by the ear at that particular point. <laughs> Selwood now. So the Cats have given up the first two. And their 21-point half-time lead in five and a half minutes has just sort of frittered away to eight. Geelong pressure at the moment. They're three kicks, 12 handballs in this quarter. Here they come again. Edwards wins the clearance. Puts the Tigers inside forward 50. Colin Jasney was really good. Picked it up at ground level. Got it back good. to Jed Buse. He's got men and goaler at half back. Just need a little steadier here. The Cats been jumped in the second half so far. As Brownie pointed out, been all Richmond's way early stages. Adlett with a big contested mark on Nathan Broad. Eight point lead. Six minutes gone, third term. The 35 year old champion, Adlett, just pops it down the line. Radigalia. In comes Dullhouse under pressure. Hebel. Bobbing around on the 50-metre line for the Cats and a free kick going the way. Nick Vlostone. Things just going the way of the Tigers at the moment. Early numbers for this term, Chiopolo. Inside 50 is uh, six zip Richmond's way. What were the inside 50s in that first half, Chiu? Yeah, well weighted in favour of the Cats, Howie. Geelong were 32, Richmond only 19. It's on your Triple M Red Z lending stats. It's a 50-42 to 42 lead. For the Cats on the Triple M, IJ Licker scoreboard. IJ Licker proudly independent. Gazza trying to get involved at ground level. Applies a tackle. The ball stymied. The umpire will separate the boys right on the AFL logo on the wing in front of Tommy in the dock. A couple of rapid interchanges as the players take the opportunity with the ball right in front of the interchange race. Soldo, too strong for Stanley. Prestia wrapped up by Menangola almost in the identical spot. AFL logo, members wing side. Will be thrown up again. Dangerous little period for the Cats here. You've got Dangerfield and Salwood both off the ground. Cochin looks to have got through that heavy knock to the shin. Moving well with that kick under pressure. Out of bounds on the full. Mark O'Connor at halfback. The Irishman's got ball in hand. Heard the call. He's going to send it Look down the members' wing side. Pretty well played by Stanley. Got it to par foot. He kicks it out of bounds on the full. And it will be Asprey's free kick at half back for the Tigers. Okay. Asprey and Grimes had tonight too. Red Z lending. Uh, Asprey, he's had the eight possessions and five marks. Grimes also the same, eight and five. Okay, Asprey sees something short he likes. And then finds Lambert, who hasn't been his usual dominant self tonight, Chewy. He's only had six possessions and he's averaging 22 this year. So he needs to get going. Well done by Narkle, kicked to go in the first half. Back by hand. Gee, it's again out on the full this time from Hughes. Basha Hawley will reset things off half back. You can see what the change in pressure from Richmond has done to Geelong's skill level. All of a sudden, they're the team that's under the pump and they're making skill errors. Liam Baker, forward hand at half back. Grime Myers was standing the mark and collapsed. Hawley. And so Basha Hawley had maybe given a little one to the ribs. Umpire was right there, said, no, Grant, nothing in that. And then Lambert. So the Tigers, they come again. Long ball in. 50-50 ball to be won. Tom Stewart did pretty well. Got boot to ball. And Ray's paid that required 15. It was only just. Now the kick comes out. Henderson takes a good mark. It was a good mark. Good strong hands. In for Tommy Hawkins. Lockie Henderson. Did start forward. I'm sure he's positioned on the ground exactly at the moment, Judge. Your former teammate. No, I think he's still playing in the forward line. 
Sends it down towards Radigalia, who started nice. He's been quiet since. Last could have been a facial falcon. Geelong want to do right now, Howard, is play down the line. Is not take a chance. They're under the pressure at the moment, but they're, only still, they're still eight points in front. What Richmond want them to do is go back into their shells, kick the ball down the line so Richmond can set up and do what they always do, smother sides into submission, then they get multiple inside 50s. Geelong still need to take this game on. Beautifully done, Radicalea got it to Kelly, and the Tigers, very different looking side. They look settled in the second half. Lost own, intercept mark. Wow, it's a very interesting kick through the corridor, but now this is the Tiger way. Free kick. Pushing it back, Richmond. Richmond free kick's going to go the way of Baker. Different game this does. Completely different setup. The Tigers have brought the second half, they've regrouped well. Good courage, Blitzarves went back. Now they go to work. The Tigers' little men inside forward 50. And the brave Jack Graham, who dislocated his shoulder, is going to come up at the bottom of that pack. It'll be thrown up inside forward 50 for the Tigers. How's it turn like this? Is it intent? Is it structure? What is it, Juddy? What's I just think it's intent. Game? I think the first contest you saw Trent Cotchin deliver a, a brilliant tackle on Reece Stanley, and I think he set the scene, and the rest of the players have fallen in line. Jim, man, there hadn't been much footy of recent times for the Tigs. No, they've only played the one game inside the past 26 days prior to this evening. Okay, you likened it to coming back from holidays <laughs> at the refrigerator company and starting a bit slow first week back well, too. Well, in our industry, you feel a bit sluggish when you've had a bit of time off. Okay. Kelly does well on the wing. I think it should pay you back late in the game though, Howie. I think perhaps your arousal level is not where it needs to be at the start, but it should produce benefits later on in the game. Okay. Tim Kelly, what's he had, two men? Tim Kelly, 21 touches, two goals. Oh. Down the line, Parfit scrambles a kick further forward. Ablett hambles over the top, Guthrie, they've got it inside 50 now. Little one to Atkins, can he spin out of trouble? Well tackled down there by Cochin. Now Narkel involved. The pressure's gone up big time in this prelim final. Liam Baker got it from Cochin. Parfit got him. That's some really hard footy. And Brandon Parfit, big play. Gets it moving, long kick down the line. They want Radicalia, they want a contest, but the intercept mark has been taken. Last line of defence by Asprey. You know what defensive marks been taken as well, and Judge, is that just the pressure downfield that uh, they're being applied? Richmond are putting Geelong under a lot of pressure, and as a result, they're just having to bang the long ball forward more often. It's a triple MC by Super Special Comments. you got Juddy and Noodles. Nice little period for Geelong. They're getting hands on the footy, but the kick there just... Bumbles its way across the line, just in attack the Cats. We're having a look at Basha Hawley on Brian Myers on the Triple M Bosch Tools replay. Didn't seem to be much in it for mine. No, professional power tools, measuring tools and accessories. Well, the umpire saw it and didn't pay a free kick. Boundary throw in, half forward, out of side. Cats in attack, Nan Curvis clean possession. Radical got him. It's just, they've changed the rule, Duke. It's an interesting one because he grabbed the ball out of the air in the ruck contest, but he did have his arms free. So I have to say he didn't have some sort of prior possession there. Yeah, the rule change is there, Juddy, but that just looked cold holding the yeah. ball for mine, didn't it? Cochin stepped up. His play, so too Dusty. Spring through the wing area, kicking the half forward. He wanted Lynch. Miscued and might have popped that one out of bounds on the full long free kick at half back. Noodles picked this early with Dusty. He has kicked the ball atrociously tonight. Like a donkey. I've never seen him kick the ball like this before. What's he going at efficiency-wise, Chihuahua? 42% from his 12 kicks. What's he normally roll at? Yeah, Dusty Martin yeah. usually goes at 54. Okay, so he's down 12%. Play on! According Play on! to Chewy's numbers, which are always the numbers Play on! reflective of what's happening. That's Narkel. He's had a couple of attempts at it. Now the Tigers fans want the 50 for not giving it back the right way. Gee, that free kick in the wash-up might be vitally important where Dangerfield got the 50 on half-time and kicked the goal. Lynch makes a good marking contest. Comes out towards Lambert. He just spins it around the corner. Revolt being quiet. O'Connor delays the hand pass. Now to Menengola. To long piercing ball to Lockie Henderson. Does well. Yeah, got rid of Baker, the big man. And then that's a good sweeping handball to Grime Myers in the corridor. Myers has got a man out the back. Jed Buse has pushed forward. In front was danger field, but the Tiger defence, superb. Basher Hawley oh. couldn't have played that any better. The All-Australian, he has been brilliant to Cochin down the line. Caddy steps in front. Here come the Tigers. Lynch out the back in good shape. Kick was poor from Caddy, really poor. Out of bounds on the fall, I think. 
It is. Cat's free kick. Tom Stewart's got it. What about Basher Woolley off half back there, Dars? The He's cats, been superb. The Cats need some big game players to stand up right now. Eight points in front, but right now you'd have to look at it. Huge mark for Stanley. He's one player that needs to stand up. You have to say right now the Tigers look like favourites in this game, the way they're playing right now in this third quarter. So Geelong need their big game players to stand up and make a statement right now. Ten and change to go before three-quarter time. And it's an eight-point lead to the Cats. They lead by 21 at the main break. Only two goals for the term. Lynch and Martin, his third, and Martin's second. Stanley, AFL logo on the wing. Next goal, so important in this game. Sold out, affects a spoil. Does well, it'll come to ground. Edwards, normally good with ball in hand. Hits Revolt. Wants to get a bit of involvement in this game. Gets it moving now, Lambert. Tom Lynch emerging as the most dangerous forward on the ground. Stewart did pretty well out the back. Graham with one arm. Did really well, bending over, still a live ball in the goal square. Rioli's there, and the Cats defence scramble it through for a rush behind. And that takes the score to just a seven-point lead to the Cats. 15 goal, third term. Triple M, IJ, the scoreboard. Oh, he's going to be under the pump. His hand pass is turned over. The free kick was given away as Richard run inside 50. Free kick going the way off. Geelong. The Cats. With about six whistles being blown, the Tigers still think they're having a shot directly in front. Ray wasn't happy with that amount of whistles being blown. He, he, he wants good, another 50 there, Ray. <laughs> it was a good call, though. Grind Myers did get pushed in the back by Bolton after he got rid of the ball. So, good call by Ray. Poor kick from Myers. Puts his skipper under pressure. Now the Tigers are hunting in numbers. Bolton, inside-out kick, inside 50. Oh, that's a big grab. Was that Castagna? In between... Two cats, and Castagna can line up for his second to narrow it to a one-point margin. And this is why we love a prelim we final. We love it, Howie. We love it. And you dare say he'll play on from here, Duke. He'll do the Stevie J, I reckon. Not enamoured with taking regular set shots, but there we go. He plays on now. Castagna hooks it, bends it, swings it, kicks it. Two to Georgie Boy Castagna. And the Tigers are rolling at the G. 50 to 49 the way of Geelong. Oh, this is absolutely fantastic now. It was a brilliant goal, wasn't it? I think it's game of the year, what I've seen so far, how in it's the contested marks of Richmond that are doing damage inside their forward 50 win. Lynch has been dominant there. Castagna there with a 2v1 contested mark. The other thing they're doing is they're dominating the inside 50s in this quarter. Richmond have had 12 to Geelong's four. It started with their pressure. It started with their captain, Trent Cochin, at the first bounce in this third quarter. And it's flowed on since there. Like Nate Brown said, Geelong need their leaders to stand up now. They need Paddy Dangerfield. They need Joel Selwood, Tim Kelly, the guys that were so dominant in the first half. They need to lead the way here for Geelong. 21-point halftime lead. The Tigers kick the first three goals of this second half. We're back to a one-point Lead to Geelong. Soldo threw it over his head. The press here managed to work knuckle underneath it. Here they come again, the Tigers. All sorts of pressure for the Cats defence. Rioli snapping. Might have been partially smothered. Back there is Harry Taylor. And he worked it pretty well to Zach Tui. Short one though wasn't Mark. So socket off the ground. Caddy got it to the goal square. Harry Taylor was the man back there. Dumps it out of half back. Trying to crash his way through Atkins. Selwood and everything. Look at the pressure the Tigers are putting on everywhere. Myers to Narkle. Can Narkle get through? No, he can't. Cochin stops him coming back the other way. Edwards ducks, dives, goes on the right. Opens up a bit of space. The Tigers have got numbers. They're going to load again inside. 50. preston has got space in a game where there's not much of it. Goes to the top of the square. Free kick. Oh. It's gone the way of the Tigers. Lynch marked it anyway. And Tommy's going to go back and line up his fourth from 20 out. They're irresistible at the moment. Irresistible at the moment, the Tigers. And right now, it's longer just making little errors that they weren't making in the first half. Brian Myers misses a kick down here. Zach Tui puts one at somebody's feet down there. The missed handball to Brian Myers over the other side. They weren't making those mistakes. Richmond's pressure has lifted, yes but Geelong aren't handling the lift in pressure. We saw Mason Cox etch his name into the Collingwood books last year with a big prelim. Tom Lynch is doing the same from 20 out directly in front. Tom Lynch has got four, and the Tigers, they're in front.
Richmond 8 7 55. Geelong 7 8 50. Five point lead to the Tigers on the Triple M IJ Licker scoreboard. IJ Licker proudly independent. We're witnessing a big game, Nate Brown from Tom Lynch. And we've mentioned about Geelong needing their leaders to respond now. They've had Paddy Dangerfield forward for the last 15 minutes. Richmond have dominated position on the ground by winning clearances, getting their hands on first. What's Dangerfield had this quarter, Jim? Man? He's only had the one possession for Red Z. They've put him back in the centre square now. Not a minute too late. They need him to get his hands on the ball if they're to answer now. What about this from the Tigers? Four unanswered goals. They lead this match. Half time, you thought the Cats, if they got a good start again, might have been one of the upsets of the year. Now they have to respond. As Juddy said, really important centre bounce coming out. Feel like they desperately have to kick the next goal. Sold. Oh, Martin on the fly. Can he trap the ball? Oh, what a tackle from behind. Dangerfield did really well. The free kick's been picked out. Going the Cats' way at centre half back. And the big man, Reece Stanley,'s got it. Stanley comes to the member side. He's got Collar Jasney marks in front of Martin. Now Geelong need the possession game. Inside 50s for this quarter, too. In favour of Richmond, they're leading it 15 to 4, Howie. That's on your Red Z lending stats. Blitzarves. Got the hair up. The number 46. Just taking time out of the game. He's forced to kick straight down the line. Really tight to the boundary line in the end. Towards Radigalia. And even if a mark had been taken, it would have been a tight angle. But the Tigers defenders are starting to really swamp the catch inside 50 now. And it's punched across the line. Boundary throw in, inside forward 50, the Cats. They trail now by five points. 20 and a half minutes gone in the third quarter. All important next goal, Selwood. What a champion that man is. 30th final tonight, fourth in history to do it. Myers, free kick. Cats are going to get it. The little man grind, Myers. There's a Richmond player down, Nathan Broad. Did you see yep. it, Browning? No, I think it was just a clash of heads with grind Myers coming in, maybe right there at the end. Um, no, friendly fire, the hip of Jaden Short, I reckon it might have been. Then he copped a knee on the way down for good measure. But Grind Myers, as good as he was in the first half, he's been one of the players that's been susceptible under pressure in this third quarter. He's made at least three errors, now a huge chance to kick a goal and get his side back in front. But he might be knocked out, Broad. He copped it in the hip and then on the way down, copped the knee as well. Yeah, accidental knee at the end might have been the one from Parfit and he's coming off the ground Nathan Brawl, he might get down to Tommy Brown on the dock. Had the job on Gary Ablett most of the night. Yeah, he looks pretty groggy down there Tommy. He's walking unassisted now, just with a little bit of help from the doctor Dr. Rowan White, what do you make of that? Yeah, no doubt a, a serious head knock and uh, Nathan Broad looking uh, pretty dazed at the moment, coming off with Dr. Greg Higgy and uh, just looking at the vision I don't think he'll be taking too much part the rest of this game Tom. There we go, Dr. Rowan White saying that might be the night over for Nathan Broad. He looks very, very wobbly on his feet as he comes off assisted off the ground. And we said this next goal was going to be big. Grind Myers, first year, pick 57 in the 2017 draft. He was a rising star nomination in round eight. And he's kicked 26 goals in his 24 games. Already got two tonight. This unusual... Matty Suckling style kick where he runs out right and then tries to bend it across his body and he's missed. So the Cats get their first score of the second half. They go to 7 9 51, 8 7 55, four point lead on the Triple M IJ League scoreboard to the Tigers. Almost a rugby league conversion. Yeah. Sort of angle that he attacks the footy at now. The Tigers, they're irrepressible running through the outer wing of the MCG. Bolton. He's got a man further by hand. That's Lamb, but this is great transition towards Lynch. He's out the back, Tommy Lynch. Menangola goes to ground. Rioli hasn't been a factor so far. So far, I say Stewart repels out of defence and does well to hit Parfit Noodles. A huge win from Menangola. There was a goal written all over that for Richmond on that occasion. Slid in, took the chance that he might have taken somebody's legs out, but played it perfectly. Nice Brown. Chris Judd, Triple M, Seba, super special comments. Radigalia smashed the pack on the wing. Selwood's been huge. Here's Myers, kick through the corridor, 50-50 ball. Stanley a bit too athletic there for Big Ivan Soldo. Oh, the handball is a shocker, though. Missed the two-metre handball by two metres, if that makes sense, and turned it over to Baker. Here come the Tigers the other way. Oh, no, oh. Jack Henry's dropped the mark. His opponent's Lynch. O'Connor and Lynch down. 
two massive plays in a row. And the Irishman saved the day deep in defence. What a play. Now Tui's got a few problems as well. He ducks and dives. Should get out of trouble. The Monopoly game at Maccas is back. Bigger and better than ever. Visit maccasplay.com. .au for full terms as the ball is across the line. They need to take a big deep breath here to catch. Too many mistakes. You've got Reece Stanley, that handball in the middle. He described it well, Duke. And then on that occasion, just an easy mark by Henry dropped. The voice has got to get around. Chris Scott's got to get the runner out. They've got to get some sort of communication out there to calm down. It is a four-point ball game. The way they're playing, they may as well be five goals down. Where's Nathan Brown with that head knock, Tom Brown? Uh, Nathan Broad, sorry. He was just getting assessed on the bench before, but he went down to the room, so it's just getting assessed down there at the moment, Howie. Okay, Zach Tui under pressure. Dusty can't keep it in. So the ball's just in the attack, 50 for the Tigers. They've kicked the only four goals of the term. Lynch has got four for the match. They've overturned a 21-point half-time deficit, the Tigers. They lead it by four points, and we've got three and change to go before the final break. Boundary throw in on the forward 50 arc for the Tigers. Big minutes, these coming up, as Howie said, just under four minutes remaining. Nan Kerbis over the top. Prestia on the bottom. Red set lending, uh, Dars. So Geelong's play on percentage in the first half was 33%. In this quarter, it's only going at 13. And they lost a bit of their courage, haven't they, Chuman? It's a good stat that you brought up, as always, on the Red Zeds. Along down the line, Kelly, Radigan Lee. It's a really good mark in front of Asprey. Can they get one moving now? They, as Chuman pointed out, very, very timely. Slow play is what they're going with at the moment. They could have moved that a bit quicker. Henderson got rid of his man. Opens it up for Ablett. Got a shocking bounce, Gazza. Had to go back and find it. Tigers numbers there. The strength of Ablett. Merged with the footy. Selwood in there. Dumping tackle. Dalhouse. Kelly. They won the ball. Off the side of the boot. Pushing forward. Stewart fisted away from that man. Now the Tigers defence supreme. And they get a bit of relief. Geez, Bashahul is having some game. Collard Jasny's been paid the mark. It was a fair call. Tigers supporters outnumbering Cat supporters here tonight. Collard Jasny, the number eight. A little chipper inside, 50. Soldo. Grimes tapped away from him. Now Short arrives on the scene, deep in defence. Vloston. Now Castagna is away. Gee, there's been some shank kicks this afternoon. Dusty tries to get rid of Henry. Ball bounces. Dusty goes again. Gets rid of it. Wants to extract a Dusty Martin with pure muscles and strength gets out of that one. Jack Rewald tried to slap it on. Now Castagna, look at the leg speed. Oh. Through the Lynch, wobbled, and he took the mark. What a game he's playing, Tom Lynch. That's got to be 50. Tom Stewart ran through the mark. There's Tiger numbers out everywhere. And the mark has been taken by Prestia. And all of a sudden, they looked a little rattled there. The Cats couldn't get back and defend. Gee, Stewart was lucky there. Structures all over the place. When you look up and you've got Lynch one-on-one -on -one with 60 metres of space, he looks up and then he's got two players running inside 50 with nobody on them. All of a sudden, you've got five Cats players outside 50 trying to get back inside 50. They've just lost their structure a bit. And then Brian Taylor refers to as a human meatball. He's got 5.14 for the year. This is a 40-metre shot directly in front. Prestia! Dion Prestia! Five in a row. And the Tigers make a big, big statement. Ten-point lead. Minute 28 remaining until three-quarter time. Triple M.I. Jellica scoreboard. Well, the messier this game's got, the better Richmond have looked. The first half, we commented a lot about Geelong changing the angles, getting the ball to the fat side, moving the ball in a clean fashion. But this quarter, it's been a messy game of football. Richmond's pressure's been off the charts. They've just been getting the ball in their boot, banging it forward, whether by foot or by hand. And since the game turned into that style of game, Richmond have dominated. They're the best wet weather team in the competition. Even though it's dry conditions, this game's turning into an ugly, high-pressure, wet style game. And since that's happened, Richmond are dominating. Still 23 degrees here at the MCG, Juddy. And you thought the long break and the few games for the Tigers, they'd start to be paid off in spades late in the game? It will, but you've got to weigh that up now against the two injuries that Richmond are carrying and the fact that they're bringing in two Ruckman into this game. So they're down a runner already. So it's going to be interesting to see how that pans out. So that's Broad with a Wing, who's battled on extremely bravely. And Broad, who could potentially be concussed. No sign of him. Uh, in the last few minutes, Doc and Brownie, Bob Jones. Yeah, Nathan Brown's still down. At, Nathan 
Broad still down the rooms, getting assessed and having the concussion test, Howie. OK, thank you. Buse on the outer side, battling with Bolton, wants the boundary line. Did he really want the boundary line? The umpire said that's OK. Gee, the Tiger fans, who half an hour ago were very quiet. Have they lifted, Judge? Absolutely. They're, uh, they're right behind their team, so they should be. They kicked the last five goals, got a ten-point lead minute. Ten seconds remaining till three-quarter time. Joel Selwood, his numbers please, two men. 25 touches. Kicks it to half forward. Radagalia, Ablett front and centre. Clever little handball to Dalhouse. Now Blitzarves working with Castagna. Hooley got back, toe poked it. One-on-one -on -one down there, Guthrie out wide. Impressive players, Mark O'Connor. Hands it back to Selwood. This kick's important. Dalhouse is the man. Stood under a good mark and took it. Beyond his range, you would think, 52 metres out. Flicks it straight to Selwood. Selwood to the goal square. Henderson in pretty good shape. Takes the mark. Lockie Henderson will go back directly in front, 10 metres out. Huge mark. Huge mark. And he's just building into his, his game nicely. He was slow to start, but he's had a couple of big contests. And this quarter had a couple of very important contested marks as Lockie Henderson. So the clock ticks down to 22 seconds until three-quarter time. They haven't kicked the goal in this third quarter, the Cats. And Lockie Henderson, just five games this year. Played prelim finals in 2016 and 2017. Directly in front, made the goal up by a move. And the Tiger defenders are pointing to the goalpost. Juddy. I believe it's a goal. That's good enough for me, normally. Please check to see whether it hit the post. Okay, Triple M, Coates High, score review underway. They head to the arc. Juddy's called it a goal. Hasn't got one wrong in 2019. Pretty close to the goalpost, fair to say. Any second thoughts on that, Judd, Matt? No, no. no. We need Snicko on the goalpost. They have got Snicko on the goalpost, yes. All right, well, we might see that in action soon in the arc. Uh, see ball, catch ball, Duke. That's a goal. Oh, goal, though. Not much happening on the Snicko. How much they spend on this arc, Duke? Ooh, a lot of money, Juddy. Could have gone straight to Judd Corp, I reckon. Who's in the arc? Who is in the arc? What are all those people doing all game? Chris O's down there. They've got a couple <laughs> of specialists there. Do they get catering? Goal umpires. So we go to the scoreboard. Umpires calls a goal. We told you two minutes ago. Get it, Howie. Yes. Three quarter time. And we have got a four point lead to the Tigers. That was massive. Lockie Henderson's goal right on the siren. 9 7 61 the Tigers. 8 9 57 the Cats. Howie. We've got two men, we've got Juddy, we've got Nate Brown, Tommy Brown in the dock. The Tigers by four points at three quarter time, it's thanks to Mackers, Triple M Rocks footy. What a game of footy this is, the Cats led it by six at quarter time, 21 at the half, then the Tigers kicked five in a row before Henderson got one on the siren. Richmond leader by four points at three quarter time, 9-7-61 to the Cats, 8-9-57. Triple M install the room scoreboard there. The numbers, Bob Jane T-Marts has a month of big deals on big brands such as Bridgestone, Hancock and BF Goodrich. But Tom Brown on the dock, Richmond is severely hampered. Well, Howie, we know they've had the week off, but they've got a couple of key injury concerns, including Graham and Broad. We'll start with Broad, Doc. What are your observations there? He won't be available for at least five minutes at the start of this quarter due to the restriction period for concussion. Yeah, certainly a nasty head knock 20 minutes uh, into that third quarter, so he needs 20 minutes to recover in total time. Look, he uh, he was very groggy. That was a significant head knock. I'd be surprised if he come back on, but he's currently being assessed by the doctor getting a concussion test, so we'll have to go through all that before they make the final decision. And, of course, Jack Graham with that right shoulder dislocation tape, but still working with only the left upper limb. Tom, that right arm's no good. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Triple M Red Dead lending stats. Red Dead lo lending loan special for the self-employed. Tigers, when they lead at three-quarter time, too. Yep, they've won 16 out of 16, Howie. Have not lost. Needs to start in the middle right now, Howard. Geelong let themselves down in the middle of the ground at the start of that sec uh, third term. And then it carried on for the rest of the quarter and Richmond were able to get on top. Big statements need to be made by the starting four in this middle of the ground now. Selwood, Kelly, Dangerfield, Reeve Stanley. They put the big guns in there, the Cats, as Nath Brown said. Can they win it? Oh, Cotchin came smashing through. He bowled over what Selwood. It was brilliant, Juddy. It was just sort of head first stuff, just charged front on into Selwood's side and cannoned him to the ground. Brilliant stuff by the skipper. She's just been awesome, Trent Cotchin. Waste moulded his game into that sort of stuff. So team first, brave and tough.
Down the line, Blitzar start on the wing. Here's Cochin again, Kamikaze style going up the ball. Bashan Hawley's been big two men tonight at half back. He has 24 touches. All Australian at 31 years of age, boundary throwing on the great southern stand wing side. Four point lead to the Tigers, 37 seconds into the last quarter. Two man saying 90 plus in the house. You'd expect similar numbers tomorrow for the preliminary final. Saturday rub from midday, then a full build up to that game between Collingwood and the Giants was a throw up by says play on Dangerfield. Quite a third term. Sends the ball forward, gets through Basher Hawley and through Dalhouse and across the boundary. Bob Jane Timmons, Tommy Brown. Howie, apart from being one of the finest scanners in the state, Dr. Owen White's a very good reader of body language. What do you think of Broad and the Doctor? Yeah, the Doctor said no go. It looks like he may not take any further part in the game. Got a blood rule situation here. Umpire Ray Chamberlain all over it. Doc, and... if the Tigers got through Broad, what would that mean relating to next week? Well, we'd have to see how he uh, pulls up through the week, Howie. He will have further concussion uh, testing through the week. If he passes them, well, he could be available. Big avan has got a nice chunk taken out of his chin. And it's the back of Joel Selwood's head. No surprise in that. That's got a divot out of it as well. <laughs> <laughs> he finds a way to bleed, Joel Selwood, oh, oh. Every week. Let's get down to Tommy Brown. Yeah, the update is that uh, Broad's taking his boots off in the room. So, as per the doctor's diagnosis, out for the night. Bob Jane, team marks, Tommy Brown, Dr. Ron White down there at ground level. Still what about this prelim final? It's four points of difference. Tigers with a lead. Oh, Richmond. Richmond free kick at half back Richmond. against the little champ, Gary Ablett. And it'll be Josh Caddy to take the ball. And, Doc, is there anything Broad could be doing in the change rooms now to try and get that preparation the best chance possible to get up? Well, after the concussion, what you've got to do is keep down any stimulation. So just get into a darkened room, get away from the noise, just try to rest and uh, take it very, very easy for the rest of tonight, tomorrow, to get himself right for next week. So low key for Nate Broad. As the ball spins out to the outer side. First goal, all important. Sell were trying to wheel his way into the contest. The Ray's got him holding the ball though. So it's in the hands of Dusty Martin, who quickly flick passes to Prestia, who applied the tackle. Kicked a big goal in the last term. Did the former Gold Coast Sun. Points downfield and drops the ball that way. It'll land on the half forward flank. Lynch has kicked four. Hitting the ball with speed is Edwards. Sends it forward. Upcoming goal for Lambert and the Tigers. Richmond with the first blow in the final term. 10-7-67, a 10-point lead over the Cats. 8-9-57 on the Triple M installer Ream scoreboard. Solid continuous flow and storage hot water. Ream, she's Australia's favourite. You used to be called cheating when you ran forward before your team had won the ball, Nate Brown, but now it's smart footy, and rightly so, because... Kane Lambert did it before Shane Edwards had officially won that ball. He read the play earlier, took a risk. He knew that if Richmond didn't win it, they had cover behind the ball. And fortune favours the brave. He gets an uncontested goal, five metres out. So smart play there by Kane Lambert and the Richmond Footy Club. Yeah, they strike the first blow, the Tigers. Ten-point margin. Just under four minutes gone in this final term. And now, back over to you, Geelong. Can you fight back with the next one? Stanley slapped it forward. Koch and Supreme, tackled by Dangerfield, managed to get it to Edwards, sold a bit of candy and then executed it beautifully to Basher Hawley, playing a big prelim final, Lynch backing back with a flight, no mark paid, second attempt, Rewalt's been quiet, slapped it forward, Tommy Stewart is the man there and he'll get it across to Henry and the Cats will get it out of half back, oh momentarily because Henry's coughed it up out of bounds on the full, good pressure from Rewalt. That's Gary Ablett standing the mark. The Tigers through Ellis with a high ball inside 50. Blitzarves drops what he should have taken. Martin's in a dangerous position. Martin hooks it, doesn't get enough bend on it. Gee, these are big moments here. It's an 11 point lead now to the Tigers on the Triple M installer Ream scoreboard. Solar continuous flow and storage. Hot water, Reams Australia's favourite. Got to attack here, the Cats. They can't go back into their shell. Ten points, it's a lot. It's two goals. Very quick to turn around. But if they go back into their shells and don't play on, what was the stat you gave us, Hash? They just stopped playing on? Yeah, 33% the first half, only 13 in the second half. We'll get rolling here. Tim Kelly's got Luke Dalhouse down the line. They get it to half forward. Lukey Dalhouse was confronted by Grimes. And the boundary thrown half forward. 
Cats attack into the punt right end of the MCG. A trail now by 11 points, early stages in the final turn. That's on the Triple M install the room scoreboard. 68 to 57. The Monopoly game at Maccas is back and bigger than ever. Visit maccasplay.com.au for full terms. It's the Tigers leading after the Cats led by 21 points at half time. Gee, that's a courageous mark from Hawley. He won't be far from the votes tonight. You wouldn't imagine Basher Hawley. Now comes out towards Lambert. Blitzarves. Lambert does well. Picked his pocket though. It was Blitzarves on the way back. Can he hit a target inside 50? Lockie Henderson clean bowls him on the dive. Now Grimes. Tigers with a bit of space in defence. Short's not sure which way to go. So he comes back to the near side. Blitzarves can't take the mark. The catch will come again. Atkins shoves one tackle. Gets away from it. Little Pierce who is really clever from Atkins. And hits Tim Kelly who kicked two in the first half. He's had a big evening. And Kelly will line up for his third from about 48 metres out. And as skillful a player as there is in the competition, Tim Kelly, well within his range, he's going to kick it from within the 50. You don't want to put the mock on him, but hard to see him missing this one. It's currently an 11-point margin. Tim Kelly from 49 metres for his third. The superstar Cat has snuck it home. Geelong won't go away. Richmond 10 8 68. The Cats 9 9 63. Five point margin. Not a lot of excitement amongst the Geelong players as that one goes through on the Triple M installer team scoreboard. If I'm Reece Stanley now, Duke, as a ruckman, I'd be saying, This is my time. This is my time to stand up for my footy club. I'm playing against a ruckman who's bigger than me, probably stronger than me. He's a premiership player. Big Dan Curvis, but my side needs me. I've got really good players at my ground level. I've got Guthrie. I've got Selwood and Dangerfield and these guys, but what I need to do is compete and be the leader. I need to make a statement right now. Yeah, well said. Triple M Seba Super Special Comments. Nath Brown, Chris Judd. Seba Super offering members insurance cover that protects building and construction workers. And Reece Stanley is the man they need. He wins it down beautifully to Parfit. Parfit. High ball to half forward, Ablett and Baker, Ablett! The little champ. Speaking about standing up, how good was that? And it was brave, wasn't it? The ball hung in the air for a long time. He didn't know what was coming behind him, Gary Ablett, but he kept his eye on the ball and took a really important mark. Good tap from Stanley too, straight down to Parfit. Gary Ablett Senior watching on, 345th game. He's averaged 20 disposals. And a goal and a half a game this year at 35 years of age. Has he got another moment in him? Gazza to the edge of the goal line, and it's easily fisted through for a minor score. Five-point lead to the Tigers. Triple M install the room scoreboard. 68 to 64. The Tigers called to play on. It's left Geelong in the last few moments that have looked like they've steadied. Baker off half back with a piercer is really good. It's been a great transition to Castagna. Get it and go, Georgie. Get it and go. Takes his time now. He's got options by hand. They go that way. Short. Floats a ball inside 50. It's not good. Clean ball. Zach Tui, though. Dangerous ball at ground levels. Blitzarv's good. Narkel wants to go across the face of goal. Puts a lot of hang time on the ball. Bounce all important. It's going the way of the Tigers. Hawley, one of the Tigers' best. Can he hit a target? Great spoil late by the catch defenders. I think it was Dal House who arrived on the scene. The Tigers will come again, though. Dusty wants a crack at goal. Comes out towards another Tiger. Lands at 10 from home. But Menengola saves the day. Sure does, Sam Menengola. A little handle there from Reese Stanley that missed the target. It was nearly really costly. This is Ablett now. Half back. And looking down the great southern stand wing side. What a prelim final. Nine and a half minutes into the final quarter. It's a four-point game. One-on-one -on -one contest. And the mark taken out there. Beautifully done, Jack Henry. Former decathlete, this young man. Again, they go straight down the line. Radigalia managed to stick one hand at it. Got it down there. The Tigers win it. Shea Bolton's got it. Sends it to half forward. Good mark taken out there by Caddy. Streaming further forward. There was a short one on to Graham. As we know, he's just got the one arm. And Jack Reynolds hardly been sighted. And he was always going to bob up. At some stage in the game, true man, Jack Rewalt took us through his night so far. Well, this will be his first kick. He's had two handballs, and that was mark number three. Sabaratagalea coming off. He looks 
a little bit winged himself. We'll check in with Tommy Brown in the dock, but Jack Rewalt is one of those type of players, never ever out of it. Just the 10 games, the wrist and PCL knee injuries so far this year. Straight down into the race goes Radical We'll get back to the mo the moment. Roll oh, Rewalt missed it. Jeez, you would have backed him from there. So minor score. Margin back out to five points. The Tigers and the Triple M install the Reams scoreboard. Let's go down to Doc Tommy Brown. Radically, he went straight down the rooms. You mentioned, Dars. Didn't look in pain with his left, left wrist, Doc. What do you make of it? Yeah, look, good news. Only down with a physio, so I expect just some strapping, and we'll see him shortly. Yeah, it looked to be a wrist issue on the Triple M Bosch Tools replay screen. Good, better Bosch. Professional power tools, measuring tools, and accessory. Gazza given an extraordinary amount of time to get rid of the footy. In the end, he was able to do so. Gee, we had Revolt in the book there. Now the Cats massage the ball forward. Lucky bounce. Kelly gets away from him. Well done by Ellis. Started the game well, finishing it well. Prestia runs through the middle of the MCG. Wobbles the ball forward. There's been that many floaters this afternoon. It's effective, though, to Caddy. Puts the afterburners on. Gets round Parfit. Sends a long ball inside. Lynch. 50, Martin and Lynch. Dusty provided the shepherd. And big Tommy gobbled it up. And this man, who is announcing himself tonight, Juddy, on one of the biggest stages of the season, he's lining up for his fifth. He's just been brilliant, hasn't he? He's been the difference so far. There's plenty left in this game to go at this stage. But his ability to take contested marks in Richmond's Who was on 50, him? It's been the difference. No one, mate. No, it was 2v1, wasn't it? Him and Dusty on to uh, the one to long five. Lynch for a handful from 30 out. Tommy's got five. The Tiger Army are up. And they lead it by 11 points, Richmond. 11 9 75 to 9 10 64. Still 11 48 to go. But Tom Lynch on the Triple M installer room scoreboard has kicked five big boys. Five goals and five marks inside the 50 metre arc. Just that bounce. It's a game of inches, as we know. Tim Kelly, if that bounce had a suited him on the 50 metre line. He had two players over the top, and it could have been a Geelong goal. Just goes the other way. They go down the other end, and not sure where the Geelong defenders were. They're out of position because Tom Lynch and Dustin Martin on one player, which was Jack Henry. There was always going to be a raffle to see who got it, and Tom Lynch has been the match winner. 61st goal for the year, Tom Lynch. Fifth for the night. What a return. His first season as a Tiger. Barely trained pre-season. They have recruited superbly to get hold of that man, Kelly. Can they respond again? Men in goal has been good. Guthrie trying to work it forward. Basher Hawley's been outstanding. Squeezes it out wide. Rioli's been very quiet. Now this is Jaden Short. And he goes to Castagna. Tigers are rolling. Castagna gets it moving. Where's Lynch? Where's Rebold? Rebold will get it. Dropped into a nice hole there, Jack. Left forward pocket for about 35 metres out. It's the runaround Stevie J style snap here, Judd Man. And he's right on the boundary, but I reckon take your set shot, don't pass it off, take your 30 seconds, even if you miss, give your defenders a chance to set up behind the ball. They're at the stage now where they need to start playing conservative footy, the Tigers. Might be happy with his last miss, Jack Rewalt. Much easier shot, but these are the ones he's very clever at kicking. Right foot snap. Listen to the Tiger Army. That tells you the story. No. Clip the goalpost, Judd, he got it. Okay, jeez, they're out of their chair, Judd, man. Yeah, just, uh, just scraped it, Jude. Okay. 12-point lead to the Tigers. 14 gone. Still the room scoreboard on Triple M. Every moment so important now. Blitzars marks nicely in front of Baker. Looked to be an 18-point margin, but it's not. It's 12. Now the Cats have got space in the middle of the ground. O'Connor can he hit a target inside. 50 men and goal is the man. He's outnumbered. Comes to ground, Myers. Flicks it out the back. Surely a goal for the catch. Men and goal. Or it's fisted through from the great Dylan Grimes. It's a point to the Cats. And it's back to 11 points as we have a look at Jack Rewalt's ball. Touching the goalpost on the Triple M Bosch Tools replay screen to us. Looked like it gave it a little nick there. I defer to Chris Judd. Nothing more than a graze, Duke. Very good call by the ump. Tigers ball with Asprey now. Right back pocket. Pumps it down the line from the side. Henry double fifth it. And a boundary thrown. Still inside the fourth half of the ground for the Cats. 15 gone. Final term. Two men.
Dangerfield Das, only five possessions since half time, had 19 in the first half. 11 point margin it is. The Tigers in the box seat at the moment. Next goal's massive. Edwards. Oh, the throw. What about Joel Selwood? As courageous as they come, willing himself to find a way with that ball. Short one onto Kelly. Takes the mark. Kelly, his kick three. What's he had? Red's edge two. 27 disposals. What's Basha Hooley had tonight? Basha Hooley, he's had 29 touches, going 80% by foot. Wow. And in a game of high pressure. So Harry Taylor marks. Centre fast, centre half forward. Maybe about three metres too far out to score. He's a bit undecided, so he chips to the near pocket. Hawley shoved. Oh, big Soldo, who hasn't done much. But he's done well there. Comes in and takes a big mark, the man with a mo. And just get it out of there, big man. Yeah, Van Soldo. It's a nice moment for the big man. Not sure about him trying to hit a little sneaky target short, though, Van. I think the McMartin rule for you, just kick it as high and far as you can. Tim Kelly's been massive in this game. Big Ivar might get another leak. Look at this one. Stanley from the side. Liam Baker scrambles a kick down the line. Lambert confronted by Kelly. Martin worked in the phone oh. box. That was amazingly oh. done, Dusty. The power and the skill and the grace. He opens up the corridor now. Lynch has got the mark inside the centre. The Tigers are flooding through the middle of the MCG. Gives it to Martin. Lynch delays the kick. Hasn't got much forward. Rewald did well to get a fist on it. Now there's trouble. Rewald to come for a second time. Graham wanted the free kick. Rewald stripped to the footy. Good result for the Tigers. It goes across the line. They lead this one by 11 points. And we've got 8.25 to go. We're having a look at the Snicko on the Triple M Bosch Tools replay. Just a little murmur from the Rewalt uh, snapper goal. Rewalt's done some good tap-ons, including yeah. tap-on of the year, yeah. Howie. But he's got to start grabbing the ball because every time he goes near it, he's trying to tap it. It's giving too much of a good thing. Chris Judd, Nath Brown back there. The Triple M server, super special comments. Best in the business all year on Triple M on a Friday night. Tigers in good shape here on the wing they had the numbers around it Atkins gave a good contest so did Myers Atkins goes back in for a second attempt wrapped up and up by Ray Chamberlain says give it to me it's time to start taking chances for the Cats 11 points right now I can't see them winning this game unless they do something extraordinary Richmond dominating field play they're getting the best looks at it it feels like it probably should be a four-goal lead to the Tigers at the moment, so the Cats have got to take this game on right now. And here it is, taking on Zach to his kick. was exactly what Nate Brown called for. It was aggressive, and he found Blitzarves on the 45. Blitzarves handball, not sure about that. Soldo Connor into huge oh. trouble. The Tigers swarm around. Now we've got a loose ball on the outer wing side. And pretty well in the end to wrap it up. Jed Buse. He's going to come just, slingshotting back to the way, Brownie. The amount of times Geelong have kicked inside 50 long in this last quarter, you start to see how much they've missed Tom Hawkins as a target. They've kicked it long time and time again, a couple of times to men and goal. They'd be loved to kick to Tom Hawkins right now. Views, touch ball, bangs it inside 50, fist away, Gazza in a dangerous position, can't keep his feet. Baker goes in like a mad dog trying to extract the footy. And the umpire will separate him with a catch in attack. Which of our boys won special comments during the week at the Media Awards? Was it Juddy or Brownie? Who got up? They might have shared it, the two of them yeah. back there, Howie. Okay. I think once you win the Lou Ridge medal, Howie, they don't give you another <laughs> award the next year on, just as a mark of respect to the other journos. I said, journos you are now, I said. I reckon my top five will be in the next year. <laughs> Ablett wrapped up in a tackle. They've got to kick the next goal here, the Cats. It's only an 11-point margin, still plenty of time. That's been squeezed out of there by Prestia to the wing. Revolt the one-on-one. Jack Henry with him. Jack Henry took it, twisting and turning. Oh, and then coughed up the handball. How brave's Graham Beam? He's only got one arm out there to Lynch. Now Dusty streaming forward. Hasn't kicked it all that well. That one back in the Lambert direction. Flicked it back to Graham. This is as brave as it gets. Jack Graham with one arm. Can he kick the goal? Misses. And so it's an even 12-point margin. In fact, it's an 11-point margin, 76 to 65, and we've got six and a half minutes remaining. Triple M install the room scoreboard. You reckon the Tigers are one goal away? And the Cats, they need the next goal. So important here. Baker in the middle. He's got a bit of space. Pierce is a ball. Out the back is Lynch. He's looking for six. Bolton's pushed off the footy. Men and goal are by hand to Myers. He's been good in his first prelim. That hooking kick round the corner. 
He's found Lockie Henderson with space. 12-point margin it is. I was right the first time. Kelly's got it on the wing. They've got to come back through the corridor. Tigers have got a lot of numbers back. Tim Kelly, two man's been huge. Disposal number 30 coming up, along with three majors tonight. Six minutes, ten seconds remaining in the game. He needs a mark down the line. Grind Myers got the front and centre ball. Well set up back there is little Liam Baker. Here they come running again. Got all the run in their legs at the moment. Jaden Short pops it down the line. Lynch has got five. He's got the mark on 50. Going to kick it to Jack Rewalt on the goal square. Just a little too short. Two on one, Rewalt fights back. Can he keep it in? And he can't in the end. Boundary throwing deep in attack. The Tigers, they lead it by 12 points. Chewy, if it's all square at the end here, two goal margin, what happens then, please? We're going to extra time. So it's uh, five minutes each way, Howie. Must okay. climb on. All right. McDonald's, Triple M, Rocks footy. When was the last time that happened, Chewy? 2007. Bolton, back by hand to Prestia to potentially ice the preliminary final. Dion Prestia take a bow. He kicks his second. Richmond now lead it by three straight kicks. On your Triple M installer in scoreboard, the Tigers have got one foot in the grand final. I reckon there's more than that, Howard. They've been the dominant side for pretty much two quarters and three goal margin. I just can't see how Geelong kicked that many goals in a short period of space. Dangerfield needs to light up this game, but Dion Prestia going into this game and had six of his last seven games, 30 or more disposals. He's been brilliant again tonight. 26 disposals, two goals to go with that. He has been a wonderful, consistent player this year, Dion Prestia. The setup was good. They had they ringed outside the outside the 50, the ball up, the ball in came in, and they had three players they could have fed that ball out to. Preston was one of them. Good setup, goal. Triple M Bosch took replay, Dusty Martin. What did he say? He just said, come on. <laughs> Is that what he said? I think he might have said that <laughs> to the Tiger faithful. Right. Okay, so I'm going to throw it up, Toby. Throw it up, Asaba. It was a 666 warning. Thrown up ball, Dangerfield got first possession, oh, Prestia, he's going to send them deep into attack again. Oh, good mark, call Jasny. Not Jack Rewalt's night tonight. 5 and 13 to go. It's an 18-point margin. The Cats have got to really attack now. They like to go down the boundary line. Could be time to go through the middle. Radigalia. how many contested marks he taken on right, Chewy, the big man? Yeah, Red's head lending, Howie Radigalia has taken... Two contested marks. Okay, sends a further one down the line towards Gaza. Gets his opponent under the ball. Hawley's been there, as Chew Man said, going in extraordinary efficiency. Somewhere near eight, isn't he, Chew, off the boot? Yeah, 80% from his 20 kicks. Radigalia caught in a tackle, tied on the boundary line. Tigers will be very happy to see it there. 4.35 to go, three goal margin. And it's the Tigers in front. Something special required from here for the Cats. What can they do? Selwood. We're going to danger field. Radicalier in the ruck. Big Nan Curvis slapped it down. Pressed here. An incredible player he's been for the Tigers. Looking for his second premiership. Rewalt tracking Stewart back. And he got him. He got him. Jack Rewalt got him. It's Paula Jasny who tackled. And the free kick. Goes the way of the big Tiger full four. Was it there, Brandon? Let's have a look at Triple M Bosch Tools replay now. Colour Jazzy's going to say he got his hand to it as a tackle for a handball. Got to agree with him. The umpires have played that all night. If you have a genuine attempt at getting rid of the football, normally it's play on. Yeah, it pretty stiff that one, didn't it? Uh, True man, Jack Rewald's night once again. Rewald for Red said he's only had five disposals, four marks, and kicked a couple of behinds. Remarkably quiet night for this man, Jack Rewald. 626 career goals coming into tonight. And he misses that one again. 12, 12, 84, 9, 11, 65. That's a Triple M install the room scoreboard. 342 remaining in the prelim final. Handy point though, Jude. Yeah, she's the old important point that oh, one, yeah. Noodles, isn't it? Eh? You've been sitting on that one all season, <laughs> yeah, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. That's what Seabus pay their money for. <laughs> that's right. The 19 point margin. Zach Tui runs off half back. They just got to go. Balls and all here, the Cats. That's what Zach's trying to do through the middle of the ground. They give it back to him through Dalhouse. Now Gazza's got some space. Takes a bounce in the middle of the MCG. He's got further by hand. This is Helder Skelter from the Cats. 
Menengola have a shot, Sam, he does from 52. It's going to be touched on the line. Back to three goals, Tommy Hawkins looking a bit concerned on the Triple M Bosch Tools replay. Alex Rance also looks on. Could be another handy point, Nate Brown. <laughs> Oh, an upgrade from Hendo. He just jumped to take that mark on the goal line, and Flixars was shepherding the ball through. If he didn't go for the mark, it looked like it would have been a long goal. Three minutes remaining in the prelim final. We're looking at Gary Ablett now with a three goal, 18 point margin. Is this the last we see of a future Hall of Fame legend? Let's hope not. What's he had tonight, Tachu, man? He's had uh, 20 disposals and kicked a major. That's what he's averaged all year. Almost. Can't believe as a 35-year-old what he's done, and we're not sure whether we'll see him again. The injury concerns broad with suspected concussion and Graham with a shoulder. Both being serious doubt next week, Doc. Absolutely, Howie. We'll have to monitor them very, very closely, but at this point, very much in doubt. Okay, some effort from Graham. Yeah, it was. Get out yeah, on the ground. Just to give that rotation to the rest of his team. Very yep. huge effort. Dusty Martin, and he snapped with a couple. Tom Lynch is the story, though. And he's got big fivers, Tommy. Tui, that's an aggressive ball across the line. I don't think it's going to pay off. Free kick the way of the Tigers. Baker, with a little man with a rude haircut, will line up from 50 metres out. Has he got the legs, Noodles? Just about. Okay. The game's done here, 150 to go. It's been a pulsating preliminary final. Baker's taking his time, milking the clock. Dusty wants it in the pocket. He's got a one on one. Baker's ignoring it all. He wants the seal up. In the end, he chips oh. towards Dusty. It's an unusual approach. It's a free kick. And it's going the way of the cats. That was fascinating to watch that. Dusty Martin was screaming at him, just demanding that he kicked it to him. It and he did. He did. Dusty gave away the free kick. He had a shot at goal. Not going to matter, though. Cats have been brave. They led by 21 points at half time. Really threw down the challenge. And it's almost the ideal preparation when you think about it for the Tigers. To a bit of a scare. And there it is. Dusty Martin's got another one. Mark on his chest. He squares it back into the corridor. And the little man, Castagna, can go back and shoot directly in front. 47 metres shot with... The clock ticking down, 52 seconds remaining. Been a pretty impressive second half, hasn't it, for the Tigers? They were under the pump severely in that first half. They hung around. Defensively, they were okay. 22 points was the high margin, Ash, at one point. But this has been a domination in the second half. This has been every bit the Richmond we expected to turn up in the first half. And this has been good stead going into next week. Jason Castanius now kicked 26 goals exactly in each of the last three years. Like that. 27. And he's got three goals for the night. That's a point. No, he's missed it. Okay. That goes through the little sticks. Yep, that becomes a point, Brownie. Thanks for that. 14 seconds remaining. Crowd, two men. Yeah, 94,423. What a crowd. Asprey taps it back towards Baker. He shovels out a hand pass to Vloston. Bangs the ball forward into the path of Castagna. There it is. The Tiger train is rolling into a grand final. Richmond 12 13 85, the Cats 9 12 66. In the end, it's 19 points to the Tigers. Redemption from the prelim final last year. And understandably, the Cats are shattered. Wonderful game of footy, Geelong by six at quarter time, 21 at the half. Tigers kicked the first five of the third term, led it by four points at three quarter time. Richmond, 12 13 85 to the Cats, 9 12 66. In the end, a 19 point win to the Tigers. They came back from 21 points down at half time. Tommy Lynch with five. Prestia kicked a couple. Castagna as well, a couple of times on the board. Dusty Martin kicked two. Myers and Kelly, two for the Cats. Gary Ablett on the Triple M Bosch Tours replay screen. Hopefully this is not the last time we see him out in the middle of the MCG. 
Here is Daisy Pearce, courtesy of seven, with a big unit, Tommy Lynch. Lift up to its expectation. But yeah, it's nothing better than being out here in the prelim. It was, um, it was amazing, the fans all come out and there's just, Ty Graham really got behind us and really got us over the line in the end. Describe the feeling right now as it sinks in that you're going to a grand final because there might have been a time where you, you saw a big, massive mountain in front of you to get him on. Early and we really just had to fight, find a way to fight back and um, get in front. What was the mood at half time? What was the message from Dimmer? 21 points down, it's a, it's a long way back in the final. Yeah, we, we sort of, we've been there a couple of times. It was against West Coast and Brisbane in the first quarter, so um, we had belief in our system that we come out in. We just needed a bit of lift in the, uh, the initial defence, so um, I thought we really showed that in the third quarter. Well done, go and enjoy, Tom. Yeah, Good luck you. next week. Over to you, Hayne. Thanks, Days, with the skipper and Jack. Uh, well, Jack's just appeared to say bad luck to a couple of cats. 21 down at half time. Eight goals to two in the second half. Just an extraordinary effort from your boys. Yeah, look, I mean, that's that's what we've come to expect from uh, not only our AFL boys, but our VFL boys as well. Um, uh, we love talking about being Richmond men, and that just comes back to fight. And the boys did that in the second half. You know, we, we weren't at our best, and Geelong, credit to them, the way they played in that first half. Uh, and for the season, they've been an uh, incredible team for a long period of time, not just this year. Um, so, yeah, humble, grateful, but really looking forward to uh, what's an amazing week um, with the whole footy club. What do you remember about the last grand final week leading up to it? Oh, look, the day was special, um, but it was all the little, little things that happened during the week. Um, you know, and our, our fans, you know, <laughs> previous to the last few years, it was 37 years. Um, and they just keep showing up and we love them. Uh, so getting amongst them and just celebrating the week and, and enjoying the week, it's all about enjoying it. We've worked bloody hard to get here and give ourselves another chance. How many grand finals had you played in before 2017? Uh, maybe two school finals and um, one under 15, which we had a win, which was good. We're in another one. Thanks, mate. The brutality of the preliminary final, the Cats finish on top of the ladder. They've already exited the cauldron, it's the MCG. The Tigers are out in the middle, soaking it all up at the moment. 21 points down. They stuck with it. In the end, they get the job done by 19 points. Here's Daisy again with one of the best for the Tigers, Basha Hooley. Uh, you know, by three, got a time. And hopefully, you know, trust that our running the legs will, will do its job. But, um, you know, credit to, uh, obviously, the boys. The pressure that we put on in the second half was uh, outstanding. We felt like we lacked it a little bit in the first half. Uh, credit to the boys. They bounced back. Plenty of smiles now. But there were smiles your faces as you ran out of the race and Dimmer spoke about during the week that having fun is a big focus for this group. Talk, us, talk to us about that. We've got the best, yeah, we've got the best coach ever because all he, all he promotes is uh, happiness, gratitude, enjoy the moment. That's what it's about, football's about enjoying the moment. Whatever happens, happens, life goes on tomorrow after tomorrow. Uh, all he wants us to do is just uh, have a smile on our face, enjoy the moment and he, tr he trusts us. You know, we, we go out there, we give it all we got. I think we should get Dima Hardwick out to dinner for the Friday huddle over the off-season and promote a bit of happiness and gratitude in this box because it's not words I'd associate with what occurs here on a Friday night. Oh, I, oh. If I base my broadcasting around humility. <laughs> Do you now? Gratuity. And you really? the other ooities. That, right. uh, Take applied. great exception to that comment. Uh, Very I think there's an enormous amount of joy provided. Maybe I'm not saying it's not joyful. It. I'm just saying it's not a warm environment. No, we only criticise to make you better, Howard. Is that right? There's no nastiness in it. Or... Maybe you're the squeaky wheel. <laughs> well, maybe. I doubt that's the case. Though. Tell you what, though. Impressive, the Tigers. It was. Whoever they play next week, the Pies or the Giants, they'd have to go in there. As firm favourites, they've been the best side for the last 11 weeks. And at one stage, to think they had Rance out, they had Cochin out, they had Dustin Martin Rewalt. out, Rewalt, and to be where they are now, get their players back, it's been a superhuman effort because there was people writing them off to even miss the finals this year and to have them in another premiership, and they are flying into this premiership as well. Would be good to get Damien Hardwick to dinner because he's a ripper and yep. maybe the best coach we've seen for a while. It's a brilliant effort what he's done this year with all that uh, drama, all that pressure. Dr. Owen White's come upstairs, Howie, and he's got a bit to think about uh, this week, Dimmer. Give us a rundown, Doc, on what happened 
couple of injuries that he's going to have to worry about. Well, certainly all the injuries were on the Richmond bench uh, this evening. And uh, considering also that with uh, Jack Graham and uh, Nathan Broad, they were almost down on rotation for the whole game because uh, Graham was out for about 20 minutes and uh, Broad was uh, off the ground for the last quarter and a half. Now, both of them are going to be uh, in uh, serious doubt for next week. I mean, you don't take injured players into finals. You certainly do not take an injured player into a grand final. Now, with Broad, that uh, left uh, that right shoulder dislocation. He's had a previous left shoulder dislocation that's been repaired. Uh, we'll get scans, but look, he is in serious doubt. He'll be in a lot of pain. And with uh, Jack Graham, of course, uh, they'll assess him with his uh, head knock through the week, and uh, we'll see how uh, he Doc, you up. got that back to front. It was Jack Graham dislocated his shoulder broad with a concussion. I beg your so, pardon. Uh, Sorry about that. I can't read. On, on, bro on broad, Doc, well, yeah. 10 years ago, he's playing next week, isn't he? We'll have yes. to wait, Howie. He has to pass the test. No, I'm saying 10 years ago, he's playing. He he's would got have head probably knock, played. We'll get him up if, and he'd be right. Correct, if he did not have symptoms. Three years ago, week. he'd play. Potentially. In fact, uh, five years ago, he might have gone back on. Yeah. So, look, the uh, the management of head knocks and concussion is certainly much improved, and uh, he was taken down into the rooms, did not pass the concussion test. They would have looked at the uh, incident on the replay, and it was no doubt that he was is concussed. Is that Greg Hickey's decision? Correct. Now. Correct. So, so nobody so else's decision, Greg Hickey's. Yeah, the club doctor, Greg Hickey, will assess him through the week. Because, you know what, he's the man who knows him best. And uh, so, he'll so be Doc, able to assess happens, that. What happens if the player, he's going to be doing everything he can to say, I feel good, I feel right in myself. Is it is it purely a statistical situation now? or what? what because this is a true test of the concussion rule. That's true. Well, the SCAT test is a way of objectively looking at a head knock. They've got to pass a number of tests, which includes memory, cognition, some fine motor skills and the, every player has a score because they've got a baseline if they don't reach and attain that number they are not available to and play how long can that be delayed for can you be doing that on the saturday morning of the grand final no generally the decision's made by about thursday so right. that you know by selection time they will have made the decision whether he's named or not of course that'll be another matter how do they get the baseline doc Pre-season, Brownie, as you remember, did uh, you would have uh, given the test a go. Yes. And uh, you would have done the much, a bunch of tests, and you would have come up with a number. Do, do some players do a little bit slower, so then when the time comes and they need to do it properly, they're ready to go. You were the bloke who did that, were you, Brownie? Let's go down there's the room. Lot, there's a lot to do it. Our man Tom Brown sets it up like no one else. Bring him in, Tommy boy. Now we have packed preliminary finals rooms as they come into the rooms now, the victorious Tigers... A lot of the young guys here from the VFL side, all the club officials, all the families, they're absolutely elated, the Pies, they know what this means, the Tigers would say, they know what this means, of course, to get into a preliminary final. They're about to go in the huddle, Dusty almost trips over the Gatorade box as he, uh, they're, about, they're about to commence the song, the Tigers. It'll be a rousing rendition of this famous song. They're in the grand final, boys, Bust, Dusty just embracing Koch, they're about to sing the song. Keep going, Tommy. They're uh, only a few seconds off Howie. Dusty's going to lead them into it. He's waiting for Jack Rewalt, and they're ready to go. Martin, one of the loudest singers in that chorus of tiger noise. Koch absolutely elated as well as they go up to Broad, just checking him out. We've discussed his concussion, but that was a huge song, boys. Fantastic scenes down here in the Tigers' rooms. We should speak to a player shortly. Tommy, for all the work you have to do, there's no better spot than a victorious finals rooms. Now, there certainly isn't, Howie. You report on all sorts of issues all year, but when you get to the sharp end of the finals, you realise what this game's all about, if you didn't know already, and it's about the elation you see on the faces of these players now, knowing that they're one win away from a grand final and winning two flags in three years. It was a momentous effort by the Tigers. They know that. They were 21 points out at half-time. And you can just see the boys, they're literally jumping on top of each other. The vision, obviously, on the telecast would reflect that, but it's just great seeing it and reporting it on the radio. It's just they're fantastic scenes, Howie. Yeah, and conversely, on the Triple M Bosch Tools replay screen, just absolutely deathly silent in the Cats' rooms as Gary Ablett wanders through back into the change rooms. The Monopoly game at Maccas is back and bigger than ever. Visit maccasplay.com.au for full terms. That's why we love the prelim final, Dars, because 
It's just a, such a different emotion. But you feel for the Cats, they finished top of the ladder. They got out of jail, made their way through after a good win last week, and all of a sudden they're thinking of a grand final. And uh, Monday you'll be seeing them in their chicken costumes outside the yep. pub. Yeah, you looked at Geelong. They were you know, basically on top of the ladder all year. They uh, you know, won the minor premiership. They dominated the season. They got the staggers a bit up after the bye. But, uh, you know, all for nothing. They put so much uh, recruiting and effort. And, you, you know, look at Paddy Dangerfield. He's a seven-time All-Australian judge. He's spoken before about, you know, his nervousness that maybe he'll end his career without the joy of a premiership medal. And that still hangs over his head going forward. Yeah, but they lose no pride out of tonight for mine, Geelong. They, Geelong didn't lose the game. Richmond won it tonight, if that makes sense. How It may sound a little bit esoteric. But they came out. They cracked in. They played their best footy. They just met, they just met a better team tonight in uh, the Richmond Footy Club. I like it when you get esoteric. Well, the big questions tomorrow, I guess, will revolve around Gary Ablett. What's he doing? Lockie Henderson, Harry Taylor... But at meanwhile, absolute scenes of celebration. I don't think uh, our man Tommy Brown will be too far away from snagging an interview down there. And Harry, the other uh, advantage, yes. uh, before we get back to Tommy Brown, they've got the VFL side up and running uh, the Tigers, a play grand Ooh. final something. Yep. Brown, is that right? Sydney so, Stack. Sydney, Sydney Stack back, but also just that extra depth too with a couple of these sore players. So it's a perfect position for Richmond to be in, having had the benefit now that we're off playing a, a, you know, a really a robust final that tested them. That's, I reckon, as good a shape as you could be in going into a grand final, aside from the couple of injuries they got out of it tonight. So those injuries, Graham with a shoulder, it'd be remarkable if he was to play broad. Who Dr. Knows Hans, fly him over. Well, yeah. Little quick visit. So, Stack, if he gets through the VFL grand final, it'll be in the mix. Tigers, you probably know the list better than us all. Well, he uh, could hardly put his arm above his head, could he? Uh, which doesn't go well for next week, Jack Graham. I mean, he's tough, but even that last shot he had a goal, you could see it was hampering him to guide the ball down properly. So who else? Stack, Stack is Stack? an option, but being back for his first game, um, you know, do they rush him back? Do, do they take the chance on that? There's obviously... Some players out there, uh, um, Marlon Pickett didn't play tonight. You've got uh, Marbia Chole who didn't play as well, but they've already got the two Ruckman who are going pretty well, so I don't think they'd probably bring him in. Butler. Uh, Dan Butler, but the young, small players are playing well, so I don't think there's a spot there for Butler. Jack Ross was a, uh emergency as well. Today's I'm Loving at Moment happened at the 11th minute mark in the final quarter. Here's how we caught it on Triple M Footy. Caddy. Puts the afterburners on, gets round Parfit, sends a long ball inside Lynch. 50, Martin and Lynch! Dusty provided the shepherd and big Tommy gobbled it up. And this man who was announcing himself tonight, Juddy, on one of the biggest stages of the season, he's lining up for his fifth. Lynch for a handful from 30 out. Tommy's got five. The Tiger Army are up. <laughs> gobbled it up. <laughs> it's a long one tonight. Like gobble it? Dock. It's a long one because you can't squeeze all that genius into this sort of. A I liked it when it was just a joke doing it every week. Yeah, it gave you a laugh. I think we're going to speak to Dylan Grimes shortly. Uh, Tommy Brown. I like it when Tommy sits up the interview and we hear sort of behind the scenes. How's it going down there, Tommy? It's going really well, Howie. In fact, Dylan Grimes joins us now. Dylan, thanks so much for joining us on Triple M Footy. You own a vineyard, like a fine wine. You got better with age tonight, after halftime in particular. Yeah, it was, it was a real arm wrestle that first half. We felt like if we if we just get a couple of things right after halftime, we'd be in with a good shot. But, I mean, credit to Geelong. That's why they're such a good team. They really put some pressure on us in that first first half. But I've, I've completely lost my voice uh, now from too, from too much yelling. But, oh, look, I'm, I'm just thrilled for the boys. I mean, I felt like the... The game tonight was a bit vindicative of our year, you know, halfway through, some real challenges, but the boys uh, all year and, and, you know, in the second half tonight, they've they've really stood up and, and yeah, I'm just so proud of them for, for really digging deep when they needed to. Hey, Grimes, congratulations through to another grand final. You sounded a bit of pain there, mate. You didn't, yeah. you didn't cop one in the throat as well, did you? No, 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 just just too much carrying on after the siren, I think. <laughs> hey, you can barely notice, Grimesy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Angus Graham dislocated his shoulder pretty severely early on in the game and ended up gutting oh, out the entire is. game. His name's Jack... Uh, Angus, Angus Graham. Angus. The Jack, old Ruckman. Oh, I call, He's going to run around this I always, call, I always call him Angus Grimsy. Oh, don't stand for that. Don't right. stand for that, Grimsy. <laughs> yeah. Were you aware that he was de- was dealing with such a debilitating injury throughout the game, or were you not really aware of just what a big effort old Gussie put up with? Yeah, oh. big Gus. No, yeah. I, to be honest, I didn't even know until now, but it, I'm not overly, overly surprised that no one really noticed because that's the sort of player he is. He really... Uh, you know, this is his second grade final he's played in. He's only in, you know, his third year of footy, I think. And um, yeah, he's just been a, a terrific player for us. But 
I think, um, you know, the fight that he showed tonight was, was across the board. I mean, there were so many players that really lifted when they needed to, and I'm just so thrilled with that result. Grimesy, last week they came at you hard, the Brisbane Lions. You're under pressure, your midfield, your defensive unit was under pressure. You responded again tonight. They started so well, the Cats. At one stage, it was a four-goal margin. It looked like being more towards half-time. You were tested. You came out after half-time, and it was like you just upped the ante. Your, your pressure rating went through the roof, particularly just after half-time. Yeah, that's exactly right. That was one of the things we focused on at half-time. We felt like we were folding back a little bit too much, and... Um, yeah, I mean, as a defence, you, you know, we pride ourselves on our pressure and, yeah, that little change really uh, really affected the game and we were able to put some pressure on them, win the ball back um, in our forward half and then send it back and, and, and hit the scoreboard. And, yeah, I mean, just from the beginning of the third quarter onwards, I thought our boys were terrific and, um, yeah, look, it was just, a, to be honest, it was a good old-fashioned arm wrestle and a, and a great game of footy to be a part of. I hope for Juddy that Angus Graham can get up for the grand final so next I. week. So Any chance I. Michael Roach could be there too? Yeah, well, Jack Dyer's <laughs> on his way back as well. I think that'd be brilliant. <laughs> Thanks, Dylan. Enjoy what is always a wonderful week, and uh, hopefully it goes the Tigers' How? way next Saturday. Yes, Tommy? Howie, if I could just jump in there. Thanks so much, Dylan, and, and for uh, giving us that interview post-game. Howie, this is right in your wheelhouse. Speaking of wheelhouse, yeah. Rubens Barrichello is down here in the uh, Richmond rooms, of course, of Ferrari fame. Used to ride shotgun as the number two driver to Michael Schumacher at Ferrari for a long period of time. He's in Australia testing at the moment, and he's in the Richmond rooms. So there you go, a bit of an international motorsport celebrity right in your wheelhouse down here in the Richmond rooms, Howie. That's a good call, Tommy. What's he testing? Down here, I think old he's Rubingo. doing some driving with Gary Rogers Motorsport. He was testing down at Phillip Island on oh. Wednesday, I'm led to believe. Thanks so much, Dylan. And he's here in the room. So I think Gary Rogers might be a uh, Richmond fan of all people. Perhaps he teed it up. But uh, he was genuinely famous in his day. He's a Brazilian. He was a phenomenally fast driver. He was. Uh, there you go. You need to be a fast driver in that sort of game. Rubens Barrichello, Formula One superstar. Well, I think we need to take a break. I don't want to go over what Juddy said. I think it'll be unfair. <laughs> no one ever played so, the perfect let's, game, Juddy. Let's not talk about it, Luke. No, I had to back over these things. When footy players. Someone's embarrassed and uh, demeaned by it. I'd hate to come back and replay that for you if you want to forget. Not the triple mine. Nah. No, so we will not play that after the break. Whatever happens, we will not pray that. Uh, hey, she's all over here. Richmond have won it 85 to 66 by 19 points. Plenty to come, though. Who's got the votes tonight? I'll do them. Yeah, I think that's probably best. Although, Juddy does wrap them, so you've got to wrap them tonight. <laughs> How do you feel about that? I'll work on it. All right. McDonald's, Triple M, Rocks Footy.